Before we jump in this juicy ass podcast with my boy Maz and the boys, San Marcos, Texas, this Friday, this Saturday, January 29th, January 30th, I'm in San Marcos, Texas. All the shows are damn near sold out. Few tickets are left. Pick them up. These will sell out. Don't try to give them the night of the freaking shows. They're going to sell out. So get your tickets as you're listening to this. Go to fatkz.com or tfatk.com, wherever you want to check me out at. fatkz.com, San Marcos, Texas, this Friday and Saturday. We will see you guys. We're stoked. And then next on the books, February 26th through the 27th, I'm in Tampa, Florida. Let's do it, you Tom Brady motherfuckers. Tampa, Florida, February 26th through the 27th. Come get your tickets. Come get some. This episode is brought to you by the best supplements on planet Earth. I don't know about everybody else. It's bullshit. If it ain't on it, it ain't shit. Go to onit.com, promo code fighter, or onit.com slash fighter, all right, and get 10% off. Alpha Brain, New Mood, Total Gut Health, Earth Grown Nutrients, Protein Powder, Fitness Gear. I got you covered, man. Say less. Onit Kettlebells, Steel Club Maces. You want to work out from home? Got you covered, man. From your phone, you can stream fitness on at six barbell, body weight, durability, kettlebell, steel club, steel mace, on at six streaming fitness, on demand workouts, on it in 30. All right. Morning mobility, moving groove. We got you covered, man. No reason to stay on healthy thick. Be a cool thick. Let on it help you. Go to onit.com slash fighter. 10% off the entire goddamn site. You're welcome. Just a fighter and the kids. Fat K, put a Z on the end, Brendan Malik and Chappelle, everybody going in, wake up early in the morning, press play and let's get it in, cause we rocking with the fighter and he rolling with the kids, fighter and the kids, fighter and the kids, fighter and the kids. You said you sucked on your thumb to your, in 6th grade? Yeah, bro. Six yeah, don't think I'm not gonna bring <laughs> that up oh, on camera. Bro, yeah, exactly. oh, God. Oh, me and Cal were talking cause he asked me about my, he goes, do you get uh, pedicures? I said, no, nah, I just chew on my fingers a lot. Always have. Cat, you had uh, you chewed on your fingers because anxiety. Yeah, yeah, as a kid, I always uh, bit off my fingernails because I was always anxious, and do then you still it fucked do up it? my teeth. No, I I stopped. How'd you yeah. kick the habit? Uh, I started getting How'd my nails done. The- what? I started getting my nails done. Oh, you didn't want to ruin yeah. them? I didn't want to ruin them. That's what it was. Like, they looked pretty and I didn't want to touch it. My my uh, cousin Beck, shout out to Beck, she used to put um, oh, that, like that nail thing? polish on. Yeah. She's yeah. like, you're not going to like the taste of it. Yeah. I love the taste of it. Ooh. Ooh. She's like, this is going to stop. I'm like, yeah, no doubt. Oh, hell yeah. Ugh. Flavor? Flavor? Now we got flavor? <laughs> They make one specifically with a bad flavor, not just like a regular. Dan That's face, the one I Dan had. Face my mom. thick young Brendan. Yeah. I loved it. Well, you nasty. I stay yeah, on nasty. them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can tell I've had a rough week. Yeah, even, yeah, my yeah, fingers week, even no, more. You asked if they if if I get pedicures though. Yeah, I thought I thought you did, but, but now, you, you, now but I know the it was starting to fuck up your teeth, cat. Yeah, it started to my bottom two front started to cave in because my teeth were still shifting at the time. That's how mine are. And it started, now looks kind of like Batman sick. My, like, yeah, my, my teeth st- to this day are like this because of it. Mm-hmm. my dad went, nah, you good. Yeah. We already got your brother braces. Yeah. <laughs> I'd pick oh, one. So you had to get braces. Oh. Pick one, go braces your are expensive. They're expensive. Especially back then. My mm-hmm. brother had the full Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Did he have he the uh, headpiece too? Where he didn't you have, have the headpiece. Mm-hmm. They, yeah, they have these the the clear ones. Of Invisalign. I should probably do something now, but bro, they had Draymond Green sponsoring the Visalign. I said that's not the range you the person you want to get to sponsor. Yeah, you. what's his teeth like? Callan, Callan did Invisalign for a hot second, just didn't do anything, and then Is he it? came in at fifty years old with Invisalign with a list. <laughs> We ain't doing this, bro. Right, everybody got. If you're gonna Invisalign, do this yeah. show, you yeah. gotta take him out, man. A Invisalign? Yeah, he had. He'd come in with lit, Invisalign, but then sipping coffee and shit. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's like coffee gets stuck yeah. in yeah. and shit. Yeah. But Invisalign takes way longer than braces. Yeah, because it, the, it's metal. It grains. I had braces, so I was like for three years. No, see your teeth? Yeah, yeah, he got straight ass teeth. Oh, thank you. What about me? What? You know what? I have you seen the the girl for? I think it's Smile. <laughs> have you seen the girl for Bronx Smile? Smile. Yeah, yeah, you haven't seen the, the commercial, company, the black whatever. girl, and she's like, I used to have a big gap. She's in high school. And she's like, kids, you just give me shit. She didn't say shit, but she's like, kids, you just give me a bunch of shit. Then I got smile. Thanks, smile. And it's, it's her teeth were identical to yours, and then now it cleared it up. Oh, they 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 they, uh, they closed the spot, yeah. Closed the space. Like, that's character. That's God. Yeah, like, you fuck fucked it. up, man. There's no way I would cry. Like a chosen I'm, few. Yeah, you, Jade Bryce, yeah. uh, Michael Strahan. Uh-huh. Madonna, it's a brand. It's a brand. Fox. It's your t- Actually, I think Jamie Foxx fixed his. He got the yeah, yeah. yeah. 
People out there be fixing the gap. You bro. never gonna fix it, right? Fuck no. no. It's the, it's Why? That's, you, that's you. You'd look weird if you. Yeah, did that. I would yeah. look so fucking. Weird. I'd be so pissed. I'd hate my life. You hate your life. Wait, what? If it's, I, it's yeah, you, if I, but it's you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like this is me. Yeah. It's it's a, your, teeth tell, your, your teeth tell a story. I see you wearing a hat. Don't think, we, don't think I didn't yeah, notice. Yeah. I stay on hats, though. Yeah, you Come stay on, on hats because of the haircut. <laughs> no, I stay on No, it's growing out. It's growing out. Oh, oh, okay. I stay on hats. Okay. Oh, there it's it is. Good. Okay, I'm no. about to do a photo shoot for Showtime on Monday. I'm like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hold on. <laughs> really? Why we got Paulie today? <laughs> today? Like, yeah, sorry, man. Camera guy's just here today. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> can, you, can you edit my hair? <laughs> I mean... You, can, you back, yeah, can you Photoshop back in longer hair? <laughs> I look good. Though. What's the longest you've had it? Like, did you have it long when you were a kid? No, not when I when I had an afro as a kid. But then <laughs> both my kids have afros too. But oh, then really? Jay's oh, oh, was fro like too, huh? Wait, okay. uh, Jay Jay's hair in in college. Uh, me and my roommates did it our I think yeah our senior year did a thing where who had the like like uh, who could grow the hair the longest. Yeah. And I thought mine was gonna be all like long and fucking like yeah, Brad so you could be like No, my shit was like this. <laughs> like like Pam Greer. J- Jay's was straight and black like down to here. Really? Are you yeah. serious? Well, you had a fro like Pam Greer like a big- Yeah, it was like a Jew fro, it was like really juicy yeah. and like oh. long. It was like I look I look like Lionel. Like, 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 like the OG the Sh- Shia LaBeouf from Even Stevens. Yes. Okay. That fro. I got you. Yes. Okay, like Lionel Richie. Like a li- you old school like 70s Lionel Richie. Okay. It had shit, some soul in there. Shit hair. was kind of popping. Yeah, yeah, you had some soul. Yeah, some soul shit was popping. You were like, oh, it's Brendan Black? I put my football helmet on and come out the back. <laughs> Coming out the back. Yeah, that shit was dope. <laughs> The little curl yeah, come out. Shit was dope. <laughs> Looking but, like Ice Cube and Easy in the eighties, dog. Yeah, but, see you. But if when you like now, when you have money, you can figure it out and like make it look good. Yeah, but in yeah. college, you're broke. Yeah. My shit just grew out like this, dude. I, I've come to realize I don't mind dropping money on a haircut. Get what you pay for. I, I do not mind dropping your haircut. Money. You got yep. your haircut. Recently. Exactly. Who'd you go to? Uh, dude, uh, uh, a fan messaged me this spot. It's called Gray Matter up on like La Brea, but not, not not too far from my house. A but bunch of fans sent. Uh, I don't mean to interrupt. You. A bunch no, no, of fans no, sent uh, recommendations. Some dude sent a guy. He's in Venice. Yeah. He's like, dude, he cuts everybody, and gave us a list of the celebrities yeah. he cuts. Oh, dude, I got yeah. him. He's I like, got this him. is the guy. And yeah. I, I tell Brennan, and this you know is the what? Guy. I don't care. I'll drop the fucking 100%. money. I'll drop the money. I'll drop the, drop the fucking 100%. money. Get what you pay for. I'm out there. Get what you pay for. Get a haircut when I leave here. Yeah. If someone's like, you are. Yeah. Wait, starting to. It's I know. Yeah. What you want? Just a lineup. Just a lineup. Oh, like because I hit up that way, yeah, yeah. Because Xbox, they gotta get. I gotta grow my hair exactly the same. Like when I shot the uh, commercial, they was like, put these waves. Continuity, shit up. yeah. They say get rid of the waves. Yeah, I forget what grow. your hair was like before the waves. Yeah, it was, was, was kind of like that, but like, oh, yeah. bro, my hair growing out. I'm getting them braids. Yeah, dog. Like, See, hell yeah. Thanks for the support. Yeah, shit's gonna be dope. What? I like your hair. You, right now, you look like Carl Winslow. Who? Carl Winslow? <laughs> he had no hair. Exactly. Bro, I'm a Family Matters. <laughs> yeah, you know what's up. I know what's up. <laughs> Eddie Winslow. Oh yeah, that's yeah, Eddie, Eddie 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 yeah, yeah, that's. Hey, he hey, he killing on this show, um, <laughs> uh, on uh, Sneaky Pete, killing it. What's, what's Sneaky that? Pete's been oh. out for a hot second, right? That's an English show. Yes, yeah, British no, show. Oh yeah, for on Amazon Prime. Yeah, oh, he's okay. on it. Black, the black guy, big. He's swole. Yeah, too. he's on there. Yeah, he's a big motherfucker. You know a show I've been watching? What's like, that? Cobra Kai. Oh, people love it. Oh, Bruh. I heard it's so good. What's that? What's that? I love it. What's that? A little cheesy. What's Cobra Kai it's, So it's basically Off Karate Kid Based off, off Karate, karate kid. Based off Karate Kid But they're all older right But they're all older I'm all So sad. they're like Running dojos I'm all sick Bro you didn't even Give it a chance No I didn't You know I got offered To do a small role in that But I was like Fighting but Don't do it Don't I'm do it out. Don't do it Don't do it Fighting I'm because it, Listen <laughs> Listen What's on Netflix I love the show Because I loved Karate start Kid Start on Facebook Right yeah Start on No start on YouTube Start on YouTube Red or whatever And then Netflix picked yeah, it up Yeah that's right uh, Will Smith uh, produces it Or whatever Okay it's, But um, I mean I loved Karate Kid, right? Mm. And so it brings back that like nostalgia feeling to like the karate. But but listen, okay, I'm telling you, UFC is a fucking big thing now, yeah. <laughs> and it's a real thing. So if it, like it, it doesn't make sense, but like if you like if you watch it, you're kind of you're gonna be like, what the fuck is this? Because the yeah, fighting I know, is I like know people love huh, it. Huh, yeah, huh, oh, is you it know, all karate shit. Yeah, yeah. so we like know it, the fighting, work, though, yeah, yeah, it doesn't. What obviously if Channel. he watches it, yeah. he's gonna be like, "What the fuck? This this is it's not real." It's on Netflix. Oh, Netflix. Yeah, it just like, got on Netflix. Two, two. Yeah, seasons? just uh, no. It's at three seasons. Uh, yeah, people. Yeah. Dude, people they're, they're fucking love it. it. Yeah, they got a fourth season. People love it, bro. It's it. Listen, My boy Top cheesy, Belden represents them. Yeah. Cheesy, 
A little cheesy. A little cheesy. But it's like it's just dope, and the writing is really good. I've heard it's, it's great. But yeah. it's, I'm but not it's hating kind of on cornball. It. I, I love it because I, I love that you shit. You grew up on karate. I grew up on that shit. We was watching Bloodsport. Uh, oh, yeah. Before, that's yeah. your movie. Class, that's, yeah. that's your I knew movie. Every, did I not know? Oh, every right. Yeah. You <laughs> did. They <laughs> sensed me in all, <laughs> all characters and every line. <laughs> yes, he knew every line. Okay, you were saying. You break my record, now I break you. Yeah. What, don't hit saying, back. He kept saying, what he kept is he saying? saying? Jay. Jay would come in, start calling. Yeah. Him. Our dad would just put that on, like, yeah, I'm gonna take off for a Dude, little bit. Dude, Bloodsport is gangster. Great movie. Great fucking movie. I like it's it. just it, it, the only thing is at the end, you know, it's like Frank Dutes where he's like, Hey, what took you guys so long? Oh, and then yeah. he's all Oh no, he's all yeah, so Luna, like, yeah. <laughs> and then play. they put up the quote of like the the stats of Frank Dukes. Did they lie? You, so never, yeah, you you've lie. never seen more lie. bullshit That's than those no stats. Oh my god, a Frank Dukes. Yeah, it was like fifty five and zero heavyweight champion, sixty seven knockouts in a row. I'm yeah, like, prove it, prove it, prove <laughs> That's it. That's what I'm saying, bro. Wait, oh, listen, yeah, he has fastest, fastest kick of all time, yeah, seventy miles an hour. Time. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. I'll, I'll have Joe Rogan throw a fucking spinning kick on a bag and beat that right now. Yeah, no, uh, no. You talking about the real guy or the the real guy. the real guy, the real guy, Frank Dukes. The real guy. What's that part at the end when he gives his homie his uh, uh, band? Oh, uh, he's all anytime, <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> if you need me, just say the word. <laughs> They've known each other for two weeks. Two weeks. And he goes, "I love you, bro." That's the guy's good. They've known each other for two weeks. Right, That's you what know happens that movie on Love like Island. No it, uh, I've oh, never so seen more movie m- more in my entire life. So 30, 329 wins, zero losses. I oh, yeah, call he has one loss, he has bullshit. One loss. I call complete bullshit. So you really think it's bullshit? 100%. Why the fuck they have this up here then? But wait, that's, that's, that's then you can, you can never confusing. find out. Because it said one loss and then it said zero losses. So what, what, it, what are we talking about right now? Well, yeah. 321 wins, one he, loss. Well, hold on, but here it goes. He told Access TV he had retired with a fight record of... 329 and zero. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. Really? I call bullshit. No, really? I love blood sport and Frank. Oh, Bruce. yeah. I just call Come on bullshit. Now. How about that reporter that gets dicked down? Oh, yeah. Oh, and the the blonde, yeah. 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 How about that report? doing the splits all shreds. <laughs> yeah. And you're repeating the line. She's trying to get to know him the whole time, bro. Yeah, sucking that dang a lang. that dang a lang. <laughs> What's the top five? So you put blood sport in the top five karate movie? Uh, Yeah. I would. 100%. Yeah, 100%. What's yeah. the number one for y'all? Bloodsport for me, for sure. Number one. But, uh, yeah, it's, it, yeah, I, I would have to go with Bloodsport as well. Into the Dragon? I love yeah. uh, Into the Dragon's really Into good. Into the Dragon's up there. Um, yeah, a lot of Bruce Lee shit, but like Bloodsport, it's just something, I don't know. There's Bloodsport, Lionheart, Kickboxer, yeah. all John claude Van Damme movies. Yeah. There's Enter the Dragon. <laughs> you know, I like some of uh, Michael Jai White's uh, films. Oh too. hell yeah! He's I mean, they're nice. kind of they're kind of cheesy, cheesy but, but I love that stuff. I geek out you over like that the cheesy stuff. Oh, I love the cheesy like any. You, uh, so you Rubble know in the Bronx. Oh, Never Back never Down. Back was Down was fire. Todd Duffy was in it. Who's I think Todd, part two. Who's Todd Duffy? He never back down. He was a fighter. But oh, he was a fighter. Yeah, was stud. Oh. Yeah, Never Back Down. I like that movie. Um, That's a hard pass. <laughs> <laughs> I can't emphasize enough how hard I pass on he said, That's all this hard, bullshit. Hard pass. I, don't, I, I, like I just it. don't like those movies. Oh, I like Ung Bak. Ung Bak. Oh, that's uh, a good one. That's a good one. He'd be fucking yeah. hitting IP3, the motherfuckers. IP, IP, I, I, I don't like the Hitman. new fight stuff. I like, I like the old stuff. Old stuff, yeah. yeah. Rumble in the Bronx, Jackie Chan. I love that one. No, would you consider that a fight movie, though? Yeah, Rumble in the Bronx, yeah. No. Yeah. That's Jackie Chan being the shit out of just like New York 80 hoodlums. dudes. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't real. Yeah. The, the Karate You're Kid. Fast with, and Furious. The Karate that's Kid with a movie. Shut Expendables. The <laughs> Shut the fuck up. What about uh, Jet Li? Uh, War, Warrior's a good one. I like Jet Li. He had uh, Bloodhound. What is it? Blood, uh, Blood Diamond or something like that? Blood, Blood Diamond. Diamond. <laughs> no, Blood Diamond. That's what fucking Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio, DiCaprio right? Which, oh, oh, by the way, oh, solid the, movie. The Fighter with Mark Wahlberg's fantastic. I've never oh, seen yeah, that. The USC oh. joint. Yeah, that was a good one. No, it's movie. not you. Wait, I'm talking about Warrior. It's about Mickey Ward. Mickey Ward? It's based off Mickey, you're way off. It's about Mickey Ward. No, I've never seen that. Oh, and then uh, who's the, the fighter? The, and then his brother, uh, played by the guy who's Batman. Ben Affleck? No. Are you talking Christian Bale? Christian Bale, oh, Christian Bale. is on real in that movie. No, that's not, not, not Cradle to the Grave. That's what I was looking, that's that's what looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's what you were looking for. And Romeo Must Die. Remember Romeo Must Die? Yeah. That one too. Come on. You guys are are talking about the fighter. Bullshit (laughs) movie. No, no, no. I didn't say. Dude, what did I say? The fighter won like Oscars. I didn't, but that's not Mickey Ward. That's not someone's life, though. But it's a fighting movie. 
It's legit. Bro, as pull fuck. up the fighter. I've never Christian seen it. Bale, the fighter. Yeah, with oh. Mark Wahlberg. And oh, that's Christian a boxing Bale, one, right? It's a, a boxing. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, boxing's fighting though. Didn't they have yeah, like yeah. a? Yeah. <laughs> 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 this movie's on real, dude. Oh, really? Yeah, you don't even have to like fighting, and you'd fucking love this movie. And it's based off Mickey Rourke. Yeah, oh. his brother. He's he's so good in it, dude. He's so good in it. Mark Wahlberg. Oh my god, unreal. Amy Adams? I'm fucks with Mark Wahlberg, dude. Christian Bale is a hell of an actor, by the way. Some would say the best. Yeah. The um, mom's so good in that movie, and too. That's, and that's... It, oh, okay. Did they, did they have the Antonio Gotti fight in there? Yes. Okay. Damn, it's such that. a good movie, man. I'm going to check that out. Damn. Man. I was talking... What's that UFC movie that came out that a lot of people were... It was in the ring. You know what I'm Don't talking about? Don't fuck with any of those UFC movies. Which movie? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you see the one that... Pro- you yeah, see the one that they're promoting on Warriors? UFC 257? What? You didn't see that? And no. it's like this actor, and he had the deep, he had a button up, but he unbuttoned it. He was like, hey, guys, why don't you check out my new movie dropping this Saturday? And <laughs> it was like, oh, hell no. WWE no. promotion? <laughs> You've never seen it? Oh, it no. looks so bad. So bad. I'll still watch it. Is it during 257? Yeah. It's, mm. Is an old fighter releasing it? No, I don't know what the fight movie is. It looks fucking awful. <laughs> I love a, I love a good fight movie though. Uh, any, any any fight movie, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like, I, I honestly don't. Hard pass. It's the fighting what? that gets. Like, have you, have, obviously, have I'm watching seen, the movie for the fighting. Have you ever seen Into the Furnace? No. Uh, Again, Christian Bale and uh, Casey Affleck's his. He comes back from war, no. and they're in Pittsburgh. And his, he, you know, his brother like has PTSD and needs money, uh-huh. so he starts fucking. Uh, the underground bare fighting. knuckle underground bare fighting, knuckle, yeah, yeah. And the, you know the ringleader of the bare knuckle boxing is um, is oh, uh, Woody dope. Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson, dude, that yeah. movie's on fucking. Who else the guy? You know who wrote it? Forrest Sam Whitaker? Sheridan. You know what else Sam Sheridan writes? Yellowstone. Is it? I thought his name was Taylor Sheridan. <laughs> no, Sam Sheridan. Sam Sheridan. You got Forrest Whitaker in here. Yeah, Forrest Whitaker. For, yeah, that's why I said Forrest Whitaker steals his girl. Ooh, Ooh. Like Casey Affleck, William Defoe. I know what I'm gonna do in Texas. Who yeah, else? I can't believe you guys never seen that movie. No, I, I did, bro. I need to write this down. The Furnace and, and the Fighter. Into the Furnace. Into and the, the Fighter. Fighter. Sam Shepard. Sam, Sam Shepard. Shepard. Oh no, Out of the Furnace. Out of the Furnace. Fantastic movie. Out of the Furnace. So in the Fighter. Writing these down. You now. know they're having a movie about uh, Kimbo Slice. Uh, Winston Duke. Yeah, I know. Where, yeah. That should be really good. Where is that something you're watching? Kimbo kinda, Slice, yeah. Oh, if, USC. If, 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 if it's well yeah. done. Yeah, that's my guy. Yeah. If it's well done. Uh, but I if it's so. like cheesy, like nah. the, like that pro that whatever that fight movie is they they promoted on UFC, that looked fucking awful. This forty seven year old actor <laughs> on TRT <laughs> did a few jujitsu classes, was like, you know it's a good idea, a fight movie. Yeah. And they have all these cameos from real UFC fighters. It's such a hard fucking pass for me. <laughs> hard pass. Is, it the, is it the same energy as the Tyson one? The Tyson movie? Yes. But I'd say, well, that Tyson one looked fucking awful. <laughs> yeah, that, that they, had, they had the mountain on there. Um, Not seeing it. Yeah. No. I want to Yeah. Mm. If, if the fans let us know, I want to see that movie. But yeah, I, I think the Winston Duke, because he's a great actor. I love him in uh, Black Pan, uh, Panther. I never saw but, Black Panther. Never? Uh-uh. Never? No desire. You're not a superhero movie guy, are you? Uh, yeah, I like you Batman. Mean, I like Joker. You like, I like DC stuff. stuff. You're not I like, like, an I like Marvel. I don't like when it's Marvel had the best superheroes. Yeah, and then also you, the you Black like, Panther thing. Like everyone was fucking sucking the Black Panther off. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> oh, 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 this here it is. Oh, this it. Oh no. No, it's GSP. Ah, oh, fuck. I'll look for oh, it. Oh uh, no, I don't know what's called. Damn. It's so fucking ridiculous looking. Dude, speaking of Would fighting, how about uh, Jake Paul, Ben Askren? Official. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, official. Man. That's official. Well, he picked, but oh boy, can he can, he's not a striker like that though. He's not a striker, but he is a his resume is ridiculous. Yeah. It, it's it it is the perfect fight for Jake Paul. Uh-huh. As far as like trying to step up to the next level. Because yeah. Ben Askren, you know, you're talking about uh all American, I think national champion at Missouri, NCAA wrestling. Yeah. He was on the Olymp he was an Olympian on yeah. the wrestle. So he motherfucker can wrestle wrestle. Mm-hmm. And as far as MMA credentials, dude, you're talking about a guy who was a one championship world champion, he was a Bellator champion. He went. He fought Robbie Lawler. He fought uh, Lima. Like he's he's been in there with fucking 
killers. Dude. I hear you, Brennan. And didn't get knocked out. I hear you, Brennan. But that was all those accolades, wrestling, gravel. This is this is fighting now. He got to he got a box. He got to throw these hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that his I, I I you know I did a little YouTube to my research because I wanted to see who he was fighting. His stand up is not like his stand up's bad. So Jake Paul, I mean, it's eight rounds too, and you know we both know three minutes and you know boxing is very different cardio and all that. So I think that Jake Paul might stop him. body I mean, shots. Uh, I don't. He, he's not gonna stop him in the body. If he stops him, he's gonna knock him out early. Yeah. I, I, what I want to see <clears throat> is for the evolution of Jake Paul is if this gets past three rounds. Ah, nah, it'll get past three rounds. You, you think it will? Yeah, if yeah, he goes past three rounds, it, 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 it's definitely gonna sway more towards Ben Askren. As that fight so? goes on, you, you, and you know how it is in boxing. Sorry. Jake just doesn't have the experience. Technique? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have the experience or the fundamentals or. The technique, it once once that initial shot, if it doesn't put Ben down, yeah. that's when it when it gets interesting. Like if he goes in and starts Ben in the first round, we're not gonna learn too much about Jake. Yeah, because he's be you know he's knocked out two guys two and zero. Oh. Yeah, well, like him knocked down. Listen, Nate Robinson, great basketball player, bless his heart. He can dunk, he ain't shit in boxing. Correct. He's never fought. Mm-hmm. You're talking about a guy in Ben who's you know he's, he's an actual he, fighter, he, dude. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, he's yeah. one of the greatest to ever do it. But he crossing over a sport though. But you're talking about a mentality, Olympian mentality. I got you. Coming over to that box. And, it would make and, and this, is, this is where yeah. the Paul brothers have to be. You know, I talked about this before on Below the Belt. Like, they have to be a little careful stepping to the real world of fighting. And they're, they're in the lane now. Because when you beat Ben, where you go from there? Where you go from, where you have to be, You're talking about a guy who's a two-time world champion in two organizations. Where you go from there? Mm-hmm. You can't, you, you yeah. can't go back fighting celebrities. No celebrities going to fight you now. Lamar Odom's still looking for a fight. Yeah, he ain't shit. Okay. Well, he ain't going to fight Lamar Odom. He's not a big enough name, and he can't fight. Mm-hmm. So for Jake, it's like, all right, now you, let's say he does starch Ben the first round. Where do you go? What do you do? Where do you go from there? You build up confidence. You go yeah, up. but you, you can't. there's no going back. So you uh-huh. just beat a two-organization world champion, mm-hmm. a Olympian, a national cha- a monster mm-hmm. in the MMA Got space. It. Where do you go from there? You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like there's no... No celebrities I'm like, all right, I'll fight him. But I, I think you are, you're better than Ben Askren. No. Yeah. Well, can we? Can so we, he's gonna st- he's gonna stay in the lane of like fighting fighters. Yeah. I but mean, but this is the first yeah. real fighter. Yeah. Like and like Ben's not scared in any facet. Yeah. I think Jake. You Paul gotta realize scared. he's going from Nate Robinson. To ben. But you gotta understand you're talking about a guy who's yeah. never fought in any capacity, in any level. Yeah. yeah. Who didn't even spar lean up to the fight, knocked him out. Yeah. God bless him. Good for you. I, and to Ben Askren who. Listen, he's been in there with Robbie Lawler. He's been in there with uh, Masvidal. He's been in there with some monsters. And, de- you know, obviously Masvidal knocked him out. But, like, Douglas Lima's a savage. Mm-hmm. A sa- again, no matter what organization he in, is a savage. He didn't get knocked out by him. That's true. Molly whopped him for five rounds. Well, you can't underestimate Jake Paul. Because let me just tell you, I, I think they really love boxing. They're already rich. Most boxers, they fight to get a better, you know, for a better livelihood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but Jake Paul already has money. He already has fame. He has the the following. He wants to fight. He loves boxing. Nah, I know. So the yeah. fact that he's like, okay, cool. I want to fight. So he's said, going for it. So yeah. So you said like, yeah, where he goes from here? He wants to fight. I think he wants to be champion. It's I a weird. It's a weird unique know route does, to but, do but it at his age. And let's say he does twenty four. Right? He, yeah, I mean, he beats Ben. You're talking about a guy with at that point three fights. Yeah, three fights. Yeah. yeah. So if he knocks Ben out in 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 the first round, you're talking about it was three fights, yeah. three rounds. I think who, who are you gonna fight? You gonna fight Connor next? Nah. nah what do you can't. what do you do? You gonna fight Manny Pacquiao? What are you gonna do? It's it's possibilities, but I think he really loves boxing. He's gonna continue to. I don't know. It's a unique route because I, th- I think I think I think it's a match. perfect yeah. matchup for him. Like because you know the MMA. I don't know how you guys aren't balls deep in MMA, but Ben asking gets a lot of shit. He talks a lot of shit. That's mm-hmm. what Ben Ben's a troll. Mm-hmm. Oh, got it, got it. <clears throat> but again, it, it gets diluted because, yeah, Ben talks a lot of shit and he's a troll, but Ben is, as far as in our Wrestling, world, MMA, yeah, yeah. a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if Jake knocks him out, he's, you know, the MMA community now, I think, is behind Ben. Because no, nobody wants to see Jake win. Yeah. Maybe his YouTube fans do, but outside that, boxing doesn't want to see him win. Nice. Boxers are like, dude, get the fuck out of here. He, doesn't, exactly. he hasn't yeah. put in the work like we have. Mm-hmm. He's getting these... Big paydays, like you know, yeah. we're not. Which so the box, insane. he's gonna bring the boxing audience because they want to see him get knocked out. Mm-hmm. The MMA community is repping Ben. Every, all of us are repping Ben. Shit, I'm I, listen, I love the Paul brothers. Obviously, I'm repping Ben. He, yeah. you know, I'm an alumni. 
So, shout out Bills Mafia. So, <laughs> what is it? Six days. Four days. Four days. days. My bad. Four, four, the four. days change it's every day. Yeah, it might have been two days. I forget. It was two days. I was on the team for two days. Because <laughs> you don't want me to come in my number on my jersey. <laughs> right. I was like, why is it 243? So, oh, I'm not going to be here long. <laughs> I'm not gonna be here, <laughs> Coach. You want you need me? You need me, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, right, saying, uh, yeah, uh, so, yeah. So everyone's with Ben. Every like the MMA community is gonna side with Ben, and he's kind of been like the you know he's been the troll. So people, you know the 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 meme of Ben getting knocked out by Jorge Masvidal is like a, it's like the biggest meme bro. Of all the, time. That was the fastest knockout with that mm-hmm. flying knee. But yeah. it's a shame because that like that perspective on Ben doesn't do him justice of. The skills the skill the, that, that the, he has. You, 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 I, take out that Mazadal thing. Even with a Mazadal knockout in whatever seven seconds, four seconds, it's a great you're still talking about a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Not in the UFC, but in mixed martial arts, he's a straight up bona fide gold jacket Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. So the MMA yeah. community is going to back Ben Askren for really the first time. Yeah. And then the boxing community is going to back Ben Askren really for the first time. Yeah. The pop culture is probably going to back Jake, Jake Paul. Paul. Makes a better fight, yeah. But, it, but it's the perfect matchup. I like it, honestly. Who who did Jake fight before Nate? He, he no, he's only one enough. So so just oh that was so, his, oh that was his first. So fight. just so, oh, okay. so you know so like you look at uh, Ben Askren. So that that Kors- Korskov, who he TKO'd, monster, where, where? monster. Where we look here, Andre Korskov, oh, gotcha. fucking monster. He TKO'd him that was in, in the fourth round. Yeah. That's for the Bellator World Championship. Uh-huh. Douglas Lima, one of the best strikers ever. Yeah, ever the decision. Ever decision didn't get knocked out. Jay Heron split decision, yeah. monster dude, monster. Okay. Uh, A- uh Shinya Aoki, okay. Hall of Famer. Yeah. Okay. Robbie Lawler, Hall of Famer. TKO punch. I see punches. I see punches. So okay, but that's on the ground when he was mounting them, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Let's go to Jake Paul resume real quick. I want to just. <laughs> well, he only has two fights. You, you, the Nate Robinson, you know, and then the other is a YouTuber. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, he was, fought a YouTuber. Oh, YouTuber. I'm yeah. sorry. I, okay, all right. There's only two rounds on Jake Paul. There's just on note. And I'm not saying that Ben's going to win. What I'm saying is it's a different fight than Ensign Gibb. Yeah, so get one and, round and Nate Robinson. It's just a di- it's just a different. So he only he's only been in a round for three three rounds in uh, boxing. Mm-hmm. A professional. Yeah. Okay, so if that if those if that's his fighting world right there. Yes. Why does he want to go? Because he loves so, boxing. It, it, but but, now, but, but, now, but like, with all those accolades like, I just told you about Ben Askren, it's still the perfect fight for for Jake Paul. Because the like my dad's gonna be like, hey, he's fighting a UFC guy. I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh wow, he's really doing it. It's like. Yes, but you're talking about Ben Askren. Even though the level that he's at has some of the worst striking of all time in professional fighting. Yeah, his striking is awful. Yeah, but he didn't have to focus on his striking. He was like, "All right, I'm I'm so good at grappling. This is all I'm gonna do." Mm. Mm. Okay. So now he has. You're, to, you're so, talking so, about so it's 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 not you're a, weird about a one percenter. It's it's just different because he again he's stepping over into the world of real fighters yeah and Ben's not scared of him and Ben has come up with game plans before to beat elite strikers and has won those fights so my whole thing on this is if J to me what makes this fight curious and I will one hundred percent buy it is if it goes past two rounds I'm gonna use and Jake doesn't knock him out how does Jake respond. It's going to be tough to knock out Ben in those first got two it, rounds. Got it, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, he's been in with some of the very best to ever do it with four ounce gloves on, and they didn't stand a chance. So so, so who you have winning this fight? It's not like you have Ben. Uh, no. No. I, it's not that I have Ben or that I have Jake. I'm, I want to see it go past two rounds and see how Jake responds. If Jake does well and uses his jab and uses his footwork, hurts him and doesn't get overzealous and make mistakes – you know, and looks good. It's like, all right, well, fuck, right? this dude yeah, has fuck, a career. Yeah. All right, all right. Ben, because ben, ben, again, Ben's the real. Di- and Ben had hip surgery. Like Ben's whole career, especially in the UFC, was plagued. His UFC career was a little too late. Like he did all his work outside the UFC, and then the UFC signed him. Mm. But he had major hip issues. He had hip surgery, so now his hips better. So you're talking about major hip issues. Shit. He was always like hindered in the UFC. People don't realize that. Mm. And like me and Rogan advocate for that guy to come to the UFC for years before they signed him mm-hmm. because he was undefeated. He was so yeah. good. He didn't have a loss until he came to the UFC. Unreal, dude. 
And you're talking about an Olympian mentality fighting a YouTuber. That's Kurt Angle. Yeah. That's what's crazy. Yeah. Kurt Angle? Yeah, he's an Olympian wrestler. Yeah, he was an oh. Olympian, then he went straight WWE. Oh. Uh, also, while we be on the subject of fighting, we'll get off. How about Ryan Garcia? Dad said uh, Manny Pacquiao fight is close to being made. The deal is done. Today's episode with Maz, my brother from another Iranian mother, is brought to you by the Kratom experts at Super Speciosa. That's right. You've heard me talk about Kratom. You've heard Chin talk about Kratom. Chin takes it with water. I take it uh, just in pill form. However you want to get it delivered, get it done with Super Speciosa. You got to start thinking like Elon Musk and get your Kratom on. If you've never heard of Kratom, it's a herbal supplement, kind of like CBD, but instead of coming from a cannabis plant, it's from something close to a coffee tree. People use Kratom every day. I use it every morning, every afternoon, every night when I do stand-up podcasting. I won't do anything without it. I swear by it. But you can't just get it from anybody, man. You got to be able to trust them. It's the Wild West of the Kratom game. That's why they're super speciosa. That's right. They keep Kratom the way nature intended. It's pure. You can trust them. Trust me here. I rock with their stuff. If you're going to try Kratom, it has to be from Super Speciosa. That's right. They're offering you guys 20% off. Go to GetSuperLeaf.com. That's GetSuperLeaf.com. Enter the promo code FIGHTER for 20% off. That's GetSuperLeaf.com. Promo code FIGHTER. Listen, there's nobody on the planet like you, so why would you buy a generic mattress built for everybody else? You're wondering why you're not getting a good night's sleep. Let Helix Sleep help you out. All you got to do is take a quick quiz for them. It takes two minutes to complete. Then it matches your thick-ass body type or skinny body type, if you a stick boy, with the exact mattress built for your body. You side sleeper, hot sleeper, plush, firm. With Helix, there's no more confusion, no more compromising on an average mattress. Helix Sleep was awarded the number one best overall mattress in 2019 and 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. I got one in my crib. I got them in all my uh, guest bedrooms. I can't get rid of people anymore because they love these freaking beds. Just go to helixsleep.com slash fighter. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they will match you with a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. So don't worry about it. Helix Sleep is offering you guys up to $200 off all mattresses, orders, and uh, free pillows for you guys at helixsleep.com slash fighter. That's helixsleep.com slash fighter for $200 off. Uh, also, while we be on the subject of fighting, we'll get off. How about Ryan Garcia? Dad said uh, Manny Pacquiao fight is close to being made. The deal is done. It's ex- it's what's, it, what's his dad have to do? Like, does his dad, is his dad manage him or anything? He's just... Nah, he, he's with. I mean, he has like a, a, a man. I'm telling you, I don't like that fight for for Ryan. See, dude. I told you, yeah. A non-title exhibition. Yeah. Oh, then that's oh lame, dude. weak sauce. Non-title. Yeah, that's it, lame. Why is it a, a well Manny Pacquiao? That's suspect. Trying? That's some disown bullshit. They're trying to get their numbers up. Why? Yeah, why are they doing that? They're trying to get their numbers up. That's so stupid. They're both pro boxers. Why? Yeah. What do you mean? Non-title. Why, why would they do an exhibition? Fought ten because, fight. Why not make it? But because Manny has a belt, dude. Yeah, Manny is not. He gonna beat, quit. dude. <laughs> he beat Keith fucking Thurman. I hear you. I hear you. I it's hear you. nuts. You know, but you, that was two years ago. That was two still, years ago, though, dude. Yeah, Manny's no fucking punk. All right, we we haven't seen Manny in two years. You want to bet on that fight? I bet. My my, I'm a little suspect though that it's a oh now you exhibition now you yeah why isn't it real like why well, be, why aren't well, the commissions why aren't the belts yeah, online that's why well well I'm because Manny has belts and they're both current fighters it's not like retired yeah, but, fighters but yeah it's not yeah it's not like Manny's not like if Manny took like four years off that makes sense mm-hmm. but Manny's in the run dude like he's talking about fighting Terrence Crawford you're talking yeah. about Earl Spence. You're talking about all these big fights. Can and I? Then you want to? Do <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you right Go now. Go for it. Who is Ryan Garcia signed with? Golden Boy. Okay. Who is Manny Garcia? I mean, uh, Manny Pacquiao signed with. Who is he with? PBC Al Heyman. Yeah. Golden Boy and Al Heyman beef. So therefore, it's an exhibition. He Manny doesn't have to sign off because it's it's not he's not really getting paid like that. I mean, he has that. That's why I'm at my my boxing. I'm a. I got the inside yeah. scoop. They okay. basically saying they can go underneath. Manny can have. They're, they have they're a not because. Because they, cause they if, call it exhibition. If, if Bob Arum got involved, then it'd be for it'd be real. Yeah, mm-hmm. but Bob Arum is not. Suspect. He's with Top Rank though. Yeah. So I'm saying the Dizone and Golden Boy, 
they were like, okay, cool. We'll just have it on our channel and all Which that. Which is weird because even for Manny to do that without his management, it really doesn't work like that in boxing. It's exhibition. It's like a sparring match. You uh-huh. listen, you. I'm out. You ain't getting my money. Oh, no, sure. you're not paying for I, it? I'd rather pay for a real fight. This yeah. is crazy I'm saying this. I'd rather pay for a real fight in Jake Paul, Ben Askren, because I know it's real, yeah. than this weird kind of. Sparring ex- with no yeah. headgear. Yeah. Sparring? Yeah. yeah, with no headgear. That's the way. Suspect. Yeah, but Manny's not gonna come. Listen, that I, honestly, if, that, if that's a real fight, if it was a real fight, like when he fought Keith is. Thurman, you crazy? You think Ryan Garcia gets out? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He his, yeah, you're right. He get his head knocked off. But again, we didn't have seen Manny in two years, Brendan. So okay, uh, what makes these guys want to go after these types of dudes? Like, what makes Ryan want to go? That's a after? legend. legend. I, I want to fight Manny. Yeah. But like, but like, but you guys are saying he's not. He he, he doesn't have a chance. I yeah. don't think right. If it's real, but, no. So what? But it's, so then, it's, so then, it's, a, he, it's like a win. A, it, to, it could be a gentleman's bet. It's a win-win situation for Ryan. If he lose, he lost to one of the greats. Not if he gets flatlined. Yeah, that if he gets true. Yeah, that's but I don't think he, if he gets think. Nate Robinson flatlined, he's not. Man, Pettic, Pack, y'all ain't gonna flatline Ryan Garcia. Shit, that's one Marquez. Marquez. Yeah, he flatlined Manny Pacquiao. Greatest, I mean, greatest knockout of, the, of our time. Yeah, but those two like technical, technical like fighters. Manny Pacquiao is like past his prime. We both can admit. Dude, Ryan Garcia just, is peaking. Beat, his last fight, he beat Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman wasn't all that. <laughs> that's insane. Bring up Keith Thurman's resume. <laughs> that's ins- that's such a stupid comment. Keith Thurman ain't shit. Keith he ran. Thurman? He running. He running for my man Earl Spence. Okay, he's not signing a fight to Terence Crawford. I get it. He beat Sean Porter. He beat Danny Garcia. But Earl Spence, is Danny Garcia not legit? You is saw Sean what, Porter you saw, not legit? Remember we talked about that. You said let's, let's Gar- go over this. Okay, okay. So he ahead. beat Danny Garcia, who's a motherfucker. And Earl Spence he beat shows Sean you what he is. Porter. And it, okay, I get you. But hold on, hold on. That was, was that was thirty a, and zero until he lost to Manny Pacquiao. Damn. Wait, 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 let's just go down. Well, you're talking about you're talking about a multiple division world champion, multiple different. Is he better than Earl Spence? I don't know. I, I don't think he's better than Earl Spence. Okay, okay. No. But remember, Keith also it was injured. Yeah, but Earl Spence coming off a of goddamn almost fatal car crash. Yeah, but <laughs> that's different than the injury that uh, Thurman had. Thurman he, had he surgery. Had shoulder, on his shoulder. Straight up surgery. Yeah, but that's a common. That's when Dude, you to beat Sean world Porter team. and Danny Garcia? Back to back. Okay. All right. Whatever. But also. For, for a world title? Uh, his you got to give that man You can't say it's not shit. shit. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm saying Manny Pacquiao. That fight, by the way, honestly, that wasn't the Keith Thurman I know. Like, he, Manny Pacquiao dismantled him. Well, that's what he delivered. He, he delivered. Yeah, you're right. Am right, I right? right? Let me know when I'm crazy. But I'm saying, I'm, but I just, this is what I'm saying right here. We haven't seen Manny Pacquiao in two years. Okay, that's okay, all I'm saying. Okay, it's Manny it's Pacquiao. 2019, all right? This guy, he's he's been fighting. Like Manny Pacquiao needs fights. He's old now. He can't do that one year. Like, like Remember what Connor said? Like, you just can't dive back into something. And then, like, yo, you think, like, these young guys, these young. Bro, Ryan Garcia is a young dog. You think he like Manny, Manny Pacquiao gonna go in there and just like dismantle him? Yeah, I no. do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I okay. Do. All right, cool. Look, I look, look, <laughs> so let, let, <laughs> let's his his last legit <laughs> loss. Like he didn't lose to Jeff Horn, the teacher. He didn't lose that fight in Australia. No, they they robbed him. Yeah. <laughs> so his last real loss was to uh, Floyd Mayweather. Easy Granted, work. he had one arm in that fight. <sighs> oh my god. This is, <laughs> here you go with these excuses that Floyd said y'all was gonna go with. Okay. I watched that fight. Okay. I mean, those are facts. Now, how, how is that facts? He had one arm. He could have he could have postponed the fight. For many many could have postponed that fight. Can you how mad everybody would have been if he postponed that fight Freddy? again? <laughs> again, dog. <laughs> Floyd said it. Either way, even with two good arms. I'm not making Floyd, excuses. Think, yeah, maybe even with two arms, it'd been a better fight. I don't know if Manny wins, but I want my fucking money back. I that did. fight was awful. Yeah, that fight if, was you, if you would have been like, this. hey, I was there. if they would have told us, hey, you know, Manny has one arm going this fight, I'm like, oh, I'm not paying for that. Yeah. Of course he's going to lose. You should be mad at Manny. He lied to the public. I know. Well, there, there was a lawsuit against him for it. Uh huh. Yeah, exactly. He got sued. Damn. Okay, okay. So b- besides Floyd, then he gets knocked out by, like, TKO by Juan, Juan Manuel Marquez. Dude, that was in 2012, Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> He, he beat Chris Algieri, who's no punk, like fought Floyd with one arm. Dude, beat Timothy Bradley. A lot of people don't think he won that fight. All right, buddy. Either way, he won that fight. Timothy Bradley, Jesse Vargas, no punk. Jeff Horn beat him. Dude, Matisse's no punk at all. That is true. Beat your that boy, Adrian Broner. That's Adrian, your boy? Dude. Adrian, Adrian thought Dude, his, that fight. Hold on. Let's go, let's go through his last three fights okay. compared to Ryan Garcia's last three fights. Okay, go ahead. Matisse, 
What's Broner, Keith Thurman. Okay. Get the fuck out of my face. That's insane. That Matisse is the one I respect for real. Matisse, dude, he knocked him out. He knocked what him about, out. But Broner's no punk. He's Broner? so talented. Yeah, ever since he's he got head case. Ever, since, ever since he got knocked out by Marcos Madonna, he don't throw any punches. Now let's, uh, let's look at Ryan Garcia's last three. Okay, let's go ahead. Luke Campbell. You, most of you've just heard of Luke Campbell. If you're not Paul <laughs> Francisco Fon- Fonska. I uh, will know who that. Is. Fonseca. Okay. Fonseca. Fonseca. Romero Fonseca. Duna. He was okay. No, he was twenty. There you go. But look, look, look! I get it. He's not fighting anyone. But look, he's how he's knocking them out. If they're not, if this a mismatch. I don't want to see any rounds. First round knockout. First round knockout. Seven round knockout. Second round knockout. Like if they don't belong in the ring with you, knock them out. And that's what he's doing. I agree. Sure. Okay, so, 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 and, that's, 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 and that's what young prospects do. Thank you. You see what I'm saying? Some yeah. young prospects will get a night where it's like, oh, he didn't look good, and he fought a tomato can. I didn't think he looked good against Luke Campbell. Because well, he got knocked out in the second round. Well, he, he always fights with his chin up. So eventually, someone's going to catch him. What do you think is going to happen if Manny Pacquiao lands that Manny shot? Pacquiao's fine, You can't too. keep your chin up? Yeah, he can't. Manny Pacquiao up. knocks dudes out, bro. Do you think he'll, he'll be competitive? I think so. You think yeah. so? I don't think it's like going to be a, 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 a TKO victory I mean, fast. Stop, like, if it's a real fight, I think Manny would stop him. But if it's competitive, then that's why they should probably sanction it. If it was something like crazy. But no, um, again. I, I understand you're the, saying the, it. I'm skeptical yeah. hippo eyes that's not sanctioned. Yeah. That's weird, man. Uh, You're talking about two. I mean, they're in there. They're do, yeah, they're yeah, in yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. is it not real? Because what do we promote. Do? You said boxing is ran by promotional companies. So, Crazy. So yeah, I don't even see the. If it's not real, fuck it. Don't make way more money if it was an way actual more. boxing. Oh, match. Yeah. No, no, no one's gonna respect that win. Let's say Ryan Garcia wins by decision. No one respects that. How? Yeah. How? It's not real. What no, the belts many, aren't on the line. It's not twelve rounds. Manny Pacquiao. Put like, your big boy boots on. Fight a real fight. Manny Pacquiao probably was like, man, I've been off for two years. This young buck is knocking everyone out. Give me someone easy first. Then I'll probably No, fight. wait, Manny, dude, Manny fucking Pacquiao? <laughs> I hear you keep saying that. He's been off Manny for two years. Manny Pacquiao? <laughs> against Ryan Garcia? Talking about the greatest to ever do it. Against Ryan Garcia right now? Against, hold on, hold on. He can do it. I believe no, it. No, I believe no, it, Manny. No, no, no. Let me just set the, let me just set the plate for Brennan and listen to what he's saying. Adrian Broner. Manny Pacquiao. Who's Keith four, Thurman. His last three wins. Matisse. Matisse. You're telling me those yeah. three? You're telling me right now Adrian Broner <laughs> wouldn't beat Ryan Garcia? No. What? Adrian Broner wow. would not beat you Ryan believe, Garcia. You believe in Ryan Garcia And I love Adrian. Uh, Adrian. You believe Broner. in him a lot. No, I don't. Listen. You believe in Ryan Garcia. You, get, you Ryan think Ryan Garcia beats Matisse? Yeah. No, nah, that's a competitive fight. It's a close fight. But even with that, that says a lot about Ryan. You be, yeah, you believe a ton in Ryan. Tank knocks out Ryan. Danny Henley beats Ryan in a boxing match. Tefito Lopez kills Ryan. That, that, I don't think Ryan is a great fighter. I'm just saying, Manny Pacquiao is oh, he's 40 what, 42, 41? And still killing it. Okay, been off for two years. You haven't heard from Manny Pacquiao. So the fact that he's off for two years fighting a young buck who's like knocking everyone out All right, I get with it. full of confidence, you think he's going to go in there and just like, yo, bullshit with Manny Pacquiao? He's going to kill Manny. No, okay. not a chance. All right. From a, two, from a two-year break? Not a chance. Two, okay. All right. Not a chance. Because how, how long did Manny take off when he beat Keith Thurman? A, a, go back to that. <laughs> it wasn't that long. Dude, Keith, dude, you're talking about Keith Because he fought, he fought he, Thurman. He fought Adrian Broner that same year. Look, yeah, that same, same year. year. So hard, uh, but he took four years off. When did he take four years off? Oh, I'm he sorry, he took how long off? He didn't take. He took a long time off after Matisse. He, uh, he took he, a year. July hold on, to he January. took a year off after the Jeff Horn lost. Really won that fight, and then fought Matisse after a year off and beat him, stopped him in seven rounds, dog, for a world title. Okay, here, hold on. Here's the thing. And then a year later, okay, fought Adrian. Uh, so he's having Wait, a long layoff, years we, off. All right, yeah. t- took a year off, then fought Adrian Broner, mm-hmm. beat him. To the, to took the, another, you know, to took the, a hot second off, then beat Keith Thurman. Can let me counter that uh, argument. Dude, when Keith took a year. Thurman. That's six, <laughs> months. Six, six months. And, he, and he's only months, yeah. he's only forty, by the way. Okay, he's four. Okay, and he's small forty. He's a small forty. Let's let's just. Let's, I love how you brought I've up. Seen him like jump, he take a year off. Matisse, he fought Matisse. At a well to well, like he's a bigger Matisse is a small guy mm-hmm. and he fights naturally at 140. He fought Manny Pacquiao at 147. And let's be honest, he comes forward and he's just a heavy handed and he's slow. Manny Pacquiao dismantled that style any day of the week. So that year off can be it comes with a little compli- mysterious ways that okay, you don't see that. Now, the next fight, Adrian Broner, that was a great fight for Manny Pacquiao. He just over dismantled him because he's in rhythm now. Boom. Then he fights Keith Thurman Boom. later on that year in rhythm and kills him. So you mean to tell me he's not in rhythm anymore? So you think he's off rhythm? Bro, he's off. Two years? Mm-mm. Okay. And Ryan Garcia, you we just knock out, knock out, knock, knock out, out, knock out. out. He's full of confidence. Yeah. He wants this. I, I see what he's saying. 
He struggled with Luke Campbell. Yeah, but you don't, you're telling you me if up. Manny doesn't hit him with the same shot, he's you think he's getting up? That's you don't think Manny Pacquiao for. hits harder than Luke Campbell? He does, but that's what the gym is for. Now he knows where I can get touched at. Now and he's southpaws just like Luke Campbell. He's like, oh, I'm gonna be ready for that shot. Mm -mm. And 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 let's uh, Luke Campbell's way taller than Manny Pacquiao. So Manny you Pacquiao's mean, faster, better footwork. Yeah, better boxer. Who has who has more? Puncher. Ryan Garcia will have more reach. He ha he's developing a jab. I like what I saw later rounds. Listen, that's a heart of a champion. He got knocked down the second round. He could have got up. He got back up and stopped the guy. And I bet it against him. I was like, oh, I see something. But even you were skeptical of the stop. I'm not skeptical of the stop. But Manny Pacquiao reach. Man, he has small arms. Why wouldn't it pop up right away? Mm. Either 67 way. 67 inches. And then go to Ryan Garcia. 70. Go to Ryan Garcia. 70. Not crazy. Okay. <laughs> now look at the height. Look at the height. Look at the height. Look at the height uh, chin. Five five. Go to. Uh, that's what. That's what. Manny he's five does five. Like. Yeah. That's what Manny's tiny. That's what Manny. Pac Man. That's what he does. Okay. Five ten. He five ten. Ryan right? Garcia. The height. The tallest guy he fought was uh. What's the guy name who patted his gloves? I can't think of uh his name. Um. Margarito. Margarito. The tallest guy. And right. And he comes in. and He shields up. And what do you do to Margarito? And he did. He, what do you do, Margarito? Okay. He killed. What do you do, Margarito? Margarito? He, he killed Margarito. Pieced him up. Exactly, up. but Margarito is five not 11. the same. Ryan Garcia is a boxer. He's a mover. He comes forward. He throws. Fa he's way faster. Yeah. Who's faster, Manny, Manny, Gar uh, Manny Pacquiao or Ryan Garcia? Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> Brendan. Hundred <laughs> percent inside the ring. Now on YouTube and clips on Instagram. Probably Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia is lightning fast in the ring. First round knockout. First round knockout. First Against round. nobody. I don't give a fuck, dude. Yeah. He's fighting nobody. All right. All right. The great Manny Pacquiao? I'm j I just want you to hear what you're saying one time. One time. You're saying. Manny, uh, Manny Pacquiao is faster than Ryan Garcia. Okay. Inside the ring. Okay. Inside the ring. Again, he his last fight. Was Keith beat Thurman. Keith <laughs> Thurman. <laughs> I hear what you're saying right now. You don't Brennan. think Keith Th Thurman beats Luke Campbell? Easy. Yes. Easy. Yes. You think Luke Campbell beats uh, Porter? No. You think Luke Campbell beats Adrian Broner? Good fight. But, 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 but look what he did there. But Brendan, he's listening. He listening. Luke Campbell is a small guy. He listening to guys that's like one forty seven. Welterweight. Oh, sorry. You go down a little I bit. Name, yeah, name someone that's in their weight class. I'm just saying, man. Okay. All right. To just discount Manny Pacquiao. I'm state. not discounting him, but you're discounting Ryan Garcia. Like I, Manny, I'm just not sold on him yet to fight these big boys. But but as a as a he has a belt. Well, him and Devin Henley had the same belt. There's a million belts. It's a that million belts. Nothing. Oh, okay, okay. Nothing. This guy comes Boxing off of, was like, here's a belt. Listen, mm. you know how when you knock someone out. Everybody getting belts. You Everybody. know how when you knock someone out and everyone is like, you on that cloud line, he want to call out. He called out Tank. I can't get Tank. I want Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao was like, why, shit, I Hold on. Why couldn't he get Tank? Well, because promotion. Again, promotional mm, company. No, Adrian, or Tank wanted the fight. Yeah, but yeah, Ryan. Because it's easy work. His promotional it's company. easy work. His promotional company you said. Know why, you know why they said <laughs> They said, they said <laughs> that's, that's for Tank Davis? Tank will kill him. I Destroy know him. I know. What about Lopez? He'll kill him. Ain't nobody talking about Lopez. Well, Tank's talking about. He, Tank wants well, that smoke. That, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Tank Lopez makes sense. Devin they're, Henley wants that ready. smoke? Come get it. Devin Henley wants that smoke. You think Devin Henley beats Tank? Hell no. No way. But it was, oh, so can I tell you a story? And Lo Lopez was on food truck. I want to hear can I tell you Lopez story? was on food truck, and he was like, Tank's easy work, man. It, which is, well. You know they grew up and they They grew up together. in the, yeah. yeah. But, he, but Tank took it easy on uh, uh, Lopez, because, you know, he's younger than uh, Lopez Tank. said he beat, beat him up. It's clips online that I Tank know. is easy. I know. But let me, can I tell you a story one Let's time? Let's hear it, man. So I saw Devin Henley. Right? Uh -huh. So he comes Devin in. Devin Haney? Don't Haney. throw an L. <laughs> there's, there's no L in there. Hey, we will, Devin. Devin Haney. Yeah. So right. Devin, now, now like. Devin Haney's a motherfucker. Now, now hold, do, real quick, before your story. Okay. Devin Haney, Lopez, Tank, oh, okay, Garcia. Yeah. Yeah. Who has the least skill out of those four? That's not fair, though. Brent. No, I'm just saying, who has the least skill? Of course you're going to say Ryan Garcia. But there you he, go. Oh, but, but that's not fair. That's not fair. But why is it not fair? Garcia has more fights than Lopez professionally. Can, okay, listen. You putting in these top. These guys are beasts. Uh -huh. They're naturally gifted. This guy. Grew That's up, who Ryan wants to fight. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you come to me and go, Ryan's fighting another prospect. I'm signing with Ryan. Okay. When you're talking about the creme de la creme, Ryan's just not there yet. Ryan, but they want to push him like he is. But Ryan just got with a professional team. Canelo. He's been training in Victorville in a garage. That's how he blew up. He doesn't have like his skill where he doesn't have the the background as these amateur fighters. That ain't like my a, fault. Uh, no, I get that. I get what you're saying. But I'm saying Ryan Garcia and Manny Pacquiao, uh -huh. and he's on cloud nine and we'll with a see. real team. We'll see. Okay.
Max put my put score. a grand on it. On what? Put a on, grand on, on it. On Ryan Garcia. Whoa, whoa, whoa. On Pacquiao? I'll put that Brendan, up. You crazy. I'll yeah. put that up. I will put that up, Brennan. Now, Brennan, I, 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 if, if, if it's, it's a real fight, if it's a real fight, we'll bet. Now, if it's like on Thriller or with a Trilla, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Video. No, if it's a legit sanctioned fight, yeah, yeah. I'll bet you that. All right, we'll bet. All right, a oh, grand. Now I want to. I want to just hope is like this exhibition don't go through. I'm like, yo, fight for real, for real. Yeah, Paul, I, I you, need a real you, fight. Well, you gonna bet a grand? A hundred percent. He must. Tri he tripping. Really? Yo, I guarantee this you, is Ryan, Gar Ryan Garcia over is Manny Pacquiao. Over Manny Pacquiao. In a real fight. Who's been off for two years? You're insane. Oh, my God. Yes. You're insane. Yes, 100%. A healthy wow. Manny Pacquiao. This guy just you guys fought. Are wild. This guy bro, just, just fought. A grand? Listen, this guy just fought in a championship fight. Uh -huh. And he, and he uh, granted, he didn't go to the championship he didn't rounds. Look great. He didn't look great. He came back and knocked him out. Yeah, but he didn't look. It was not, you didn't watch that and be like, oh, he, that's the next big thing. No, <laughs> no. You, what did he show you? He showed you heart. Confidence, and he showed you power in the late rounds. That's all I, I need from I, a fighter. I saw a slow left hook. You know that left hook was slow. You said it was fast when you were your no, I didn't. I, no, I was like, that left hook is not hitting. Which when we watched, one? I was like, that left hook is not there. When he knocked him out? When he knocked him out? Body shot was dope. Okay. But uh, when he kept going up top, oh. it was not there. It'll be better. It'll be there for Manny, Manny Pacquiao. You're insane. Hey, look, let me tell you a story real quick, and I'm going to tell you. I'm, we'll get off it. So yeah, let's hear it. Devin, so Tank was 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 in all in the doghouse. Tank was running through these guys and like tell the listener what the doghouse is at Floyd. Mayweather's uh, so Floyd school. Mayweather's boxing gym. Uh, the doghouse is it was sparring match with like unlimited time. It's no time. It's like you fight have, day. They they find out like the heart of the heart. Everybody. Yeah, so it's like mostly black African American fighters. We're around the ring. We beat like this on the side. It's yeah. so intense. It's so intense. So it like, gives me anxiety watching. We talk. We talk shit. So you will talk shit to you. Like get you off the game. They're trying to break. Oh, you told me. They're, they're trying, trying to break. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was the day where Tank was just like breaking one everyone down. Yeah. And he was like, man, no one wants to spar Tank. Floyd was with uh, Devin at the time, he, and they, they called him, and it was like, yo, uh, hey, man, Tank talking shit. He was like, no one wants to spar him in this weight class. And Floyd was like, I got someone in the car with me right now. And then it was uh, Devin Haney. It was Devin Haney. And then so he was they like, pull "You up to the gym? Pull up to the gym now." Devin Haney, dad is the real legit dude. He a yes. real one, like yeah. real hardcore. He was like, "Man, hey, ain't gonna be no sparring. We talking about doghouse. Put money up." So they was like, "Oh shit!" Everyone was like, "Now nah, I put I put money up on Tank, man. Devin gonna get killed." So it was like, I "Put they were betting like stacks, like ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty. I swear, really? no, no headgear, no head, no it was headgear, it was no headgear. Word. So, but no, no time limit. So it's like no brunt rounds. It's like doghouse fight to the death, right kind of thing. But these are prospects at the time. So they were like, "Oh, is money involved? Oh, turn the clock off. Everybody start beating all that other stuff. Floyd right there entertaining. He was like, "I put my money on tank, right? Yeah, Floyd put money on tank. Put Smart. money on tank, right? Get in the doghouse, and man, tank. No, you're I, not gonna say Devin beat him." Devin. No, he didn't. Devin, bro. No, he didn't. Devin's dad. Are you allowed to tell everyone? the story? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, and everyone who can was there, they can confirm it. Like, yo, Devin, Devin put it on Tank. Devin no. put it on. Man, <gasps> Devin put it on Tank. Devin's a real one. Devin put it on Tank, dog. Yeah. I don't did know the really? story out there. I swear to God. I swear to God. How long did they? And go? only person that had was filming was uh, you know, Ely. Because they, they usually go, say cameras off too during. Yeah, 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 but it, that's what I'm saying. Ely, uh, that, that guy like Ely set, set back. How, how did Devin put it on him? Hold on, is this us? Uh, Devin just like kept body shot. like bro. Tank was just shoving, like in the corner. Yeah, and he kept holding him, and they was like, nah, nah, let him, let him go, let him go. Until the started, um, one of the trainers got in the ring. Tank was in landing. Wasn't landing anything. I'm talking about I didn't know, no, no, no early rounds. I didn't like know Tank, Haney was that good, bro. T listen, the guy works hard, tech like skill, like the dude is. I never, but again, he won't do that in real life in a real Maybe, fight. But who he, knows? But yeah, he showed, as real he, as showed me, he showed me. He showed me something like that. Yeah. And listen. Have the, you ever done the doghouse thing? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Shit was so intense. You ever done my something like that? My first. Yeah. They talk shit to we, me. We, it's not that we do no time in MMA. They call it the shark tank. So when you're getting ready for a fight. Love that shit. Like I that. stay in uh -huh. and then there's a new guy every fresh round. So you go five rounds. You still get your minute break, but you go five rounds. Oh. And I stay in and a new fresh fighter comes every round. Are you serious? And you're talking about killers. Yeah. Wrestling killers, no MMA. MMA, 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 small gloves, killers. You don't get no break, no break, nah, five rounds. But hold on, it was a and you, you knew you were gonna do it, you'd have like the worst fucking anxiety, really. Oh, I used to hate it. How many, so, how, sleep. so, how many, like, what was it? It'd, 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 be, it'd be like Shane Carwin, Rashad yeah. Evans, Cody Donovan, oh, beast. Elliot Mar, just monsters, and they're just watching you. And by that fourth round, you're exhausted. Well, how many days a week did you do that? Oh, man, just like, once. Oh, okay. 
Once, yeah. once, once a, a week, once a camp, once a camp, once a camp. That is stressful. Did, nah. Doesn't compete like wrestle until someone's wear out. Did the next one come in? Is that they'll do that? They'll oh, break them. Yeah, in wrestling, we used to do that. You go till some guy breaks. Oh, okay. And how many times do you do that? We we do that all the time. Oh, okay, got you. Yeah. So that's like y'all de- version of the doghouse. Yeah. And you gotcha. and you've done the doghouse. Yeah. I was like, nah, it's so stressful. It's, it's stressful. Yeah. I mean, it was it was fun with your friends. It's an, I love when I fought new guys who was like new to the yeah, 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 yeah. Because all the homies that like they would talk shit and beat them. Yeah. And when you land a punch, it's like a, a rap battle. You know how like when a, a bar doesn't it land. Was, oh, oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it's embarrassing. embarrassing. It's yeah. embarrassing. So it's then embarrassing. it makes up the guy. I, I, I did a Shark Tank getting That's ready for stressful. my. I, I was doing the Shark Tank getting ready for my Ben Rothwell <laughs> fight. And Shane Carwin, who's the heavyweight champ, yeah. came in the third round and dude knocked straight up knocked me out. Wait, wait, what? It's Knocked four? Out, and then they like uh, picked me back up and I kept going. And then my, wait, fight, the my fight was the next weekend. So I went to that fight and everyone was like, oh, you barely got hit. It's like, yeah, I got knocked out the week before. Shit. Wait, hold fucked, on. Time out, time, time, time out. That's like with uh, Anthony Joshua with the Andy Ruiz one yeah. fight. He got knocked out sparring. And you can't right? say nothing. You can't be like, you know, after the, in the post fight, came back, oh, well, I got knocked out last week. <laughs> it doesn't work That's like why that? I fucked up this. No, you no. just got to eat it. Fuck. I can say it now. Yeah. Is Moss here? Yeah, he's in the bathroom. All right. oh, okay. I'm going to take a piss, too. All right. Hey, man, it's 2021, and maybe you still have anxiety. Maybe you're still talking to your bum-ass friends about your problems. Just quit doing that. Talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about. There's better help, all right? Something is interfering with your happiness, preventing you from achieving your goals. Well, guess what? BetterHelp is here to help you. They will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Forget the chat rooms, forget the forums, forget the Instagram comments. Dude, get with a real professional who can start communicating under 48 hours, not crisis lines, not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. All right? The service is available worldwide. Log in your account anytime. Send a message to your counselor. You get a timely, thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly videos, which I s- suggest you do, or phone sessions, however you want to get it done. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is also available for those that need it. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit BetterHelp.com slash fighter. That's better. H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. We're talking about real counselors here, son. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, so you guys, the Fire and Kids listeners, get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash fighter. That's BetterHelp.com slash fighter. Maz, what's going on, brother? How are you? I'm great, man. It's good to see you. Good to see you, yeah. man. I love this setup. I never, I never been in here, so this is yeah, really. Yeah, this is really, your first time, huh? This is my first time, man. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Last time I saw you, you and I were doing stand up at the Laugh Factory. I had to follow you, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> you know, Brendan, a nightmare. Well, you know, <laughs> it was once a I, once I take down my pants, and people seen that, and it's hard falling. <laughs> hard falling. It's hard falling. They're like, "That's a small penis." Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just fall. That. They're still talking. You're on stage. You're like, "Hey, I got jokes." That was a small penis. <laughs> you know, it's funny you, you say crushed, that. Man. Well, thanks, man. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I was look. I, I, I scroll through photos sometimes, and it was March 12th. And it was interesting because last year around this time, you and I saw each other on a plane. Yep. And as I was, uh, I remember I had all these dates lined up and people yeah. were always like, I was talking to Paul Veerzy and we're like, are you going to be doing your dates? We're like, yeah, because the government hasn't said anything. Mm-hmm. And the government didn't say anything. It took like it took the NBA, a private enterprise, to shut that shit down before yeah. we all started shutting that serious. shit down. Yeah, especially yeah. comics. I remember I was on a plane. I was headed to New Orleans. I'm on the plane, and it's when everything's starting to get hectic. And I'm like, "Are we?" I'm texting my my agent. I'm like, "Are you sure I'm good to do this?" Because it's like a theater of 800 people. And he's like, "Yeah, you're good, man. You're good." And then uh, my brother, who's my road manager, goes, "Hey, Bert just canceled." Mm. I'm like, "Bert Kreischer did? Yeah. Like, Bert just canceled? He's in New Orleans, same night, different theater, different venue. He just canceled." I'm like, "Something's going on here, dude." So I text my agent. I'm like, "Dude, are you 100 percent sure I'm good to go?" And he goes, well, we're playing by air. I just got off the plane. Play by air? Yeah. I'm out. But see, that's the, pro- that's the mm-hmm. problem is, and, and we can go back, and I don't know what your guys' politics are. It doesn't matter. The point is, we look to our leadership to go, Huge at some problem. point, to go, listen, this shit's serious. We're going to lock that shit down. The problem, so, the problem is it wasn't clear. Like The information from the top officials, whether it's Newsom, Fa- even Fauci, yeah. who, you know, Fauci to Trump to, to our leaders, 
it was just like you you had to sh- kind of like shuffle through all this bullshit and but we didn't it was like so but that's confusing, the point. But, that, but that's we, the we point. We didn't know. But like nothing was clear. The point is, look, when you come to my comedy show, you're going to yeah. count on me being having funny. jokes, being funny. Yes. I'm going to deliver. I'm going to have energy. I'm there every night. I'm going to do. There's it right. no confusion. Yeah. No confusion. So we also look to our CD, CDC. I did. I've had a guy on my podcast who is, uh, um, an, uh, you know, a, a journalist who was who was uh, uh, studying all the epi- epidemiology and all that stuff. He'd done all the reporting. Yeah. And he was he was trying to, you know, uh, tell us. An analogy. He goes, CDC is the New York Yankees of disease control. Like meaning, like they are supposed to be the best of the best. Yes. And so we look at you look at the best of the best, and you go, all right, are we going to lock it down or not? But it falls on two comics talking and going, you going to do your dates this weekend? <laughs> I don't know. Should we? I'm not sure. <laughs> How many people? Could, we had no idea. Yeah. We the, had well, no the idea. nation didn't either, and there was like. Well, this state's locked down. This one's not. That's what's you crazy. Can eat in this restaurant, not in this city. Look, dude. And I'm like, wait. I just want one blanket. Like, tell me what to do, but know your shit. Don't tell me wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Straight up, you need to uh, listen. I, again, Monday, Monday morning quarterbacking. But still, you need to have your leadership from the federal government needs to step up and be like, yo, we're not sure what's going on, mm-hmm. but we're just right now, straight up. Let's just cancel for everybody. Cancel, hey, Brendan, cancel your cancel, gig. Cancel because we don't know. Moss, cancel your gig. We yeah. don't know. We're figuring this out. Yes. As opposed to leaving it up to us. So you and I, March 12th, were at the Comedy Store. Great time. And at the Laugh Factory. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting because they had gone to the thing of like 50 person capacity. Yep. That was what it was at at the, the Comedy Store. The oh, Comedy Store. And the, store. Store. And the factory, yeah, both yeah. of them. Okay. And people, it was funny because people were all nervous. Nobody knew what was going on. It was like, and then and it, it got a laugh because you go on stage. I went on stage. I was like, are we supposed to be here? Yeah. And they're all laughing. I was like, you guys don't give a shit. Like nobody. And and like you said, we had a great time. I have that picture of you and me just right there, not knowing what's coming, man. It was um, so, who knew? Who knew? Who but knew? I think the other thing that was confusing, is, especially even now, it's like, for us to look at the leaders and the leadership in the government, uh, and you know, you can look at the approval rating of our leadership in our government. It's so down because we don't trust it. Because Absolutely. you see Newsom, yeah. who it's like, is it this serious? Because he's in a restaurant, right? He didn't shut down his right. vineyard. Right. He's like, he's out and about. Yeah. So I know he's shutting down all the small businesses, but yeah. then he's okay. Well, what I do is I'm I'm a person of like I err on the side of caution. So I'm sitting there going like, all right, even if this guy says shut it down, then he goes to a restaurant himself. I go, look, this is pretty legit. Like, you, you you can look at a Fauci and be like, you know, people always argue, well, he didn't say wear masks in the beginning. Well, you look at him and he goes, well, the, at, we were, the data was coming in, number one. Number two, we didn't want everyone going and taking the N95s the way they were taking all the toilet paper. And then the medical yeah. people don't have masks. That's the other thing I say. Our country. Tell us that. But, <laughs> but, but, but don't let us fe- find that out no, no. secondhand from like but, TMZ because then it's like, all right, now we don't trust you. But listen, but listen, here's the problem. And I, I don't, again, I don't know where you guys fall on it. I definitely am left leaning when it comes to my politics. And I feel like there was a lot of anti-science in the previous administration to the point mm-hmm. where Scott Atlas shows up and he's like, let's just do herd immunity. And then someone's like, well, if you do the math, that's like two, three million people got to die before we just get there without all one, the other- One percent of three million. Yeah, like whatever it is, right? 300 million. Yeah, so people. whatever that is. So, so I feel like um, um, you know, the, the, the problem was a lack of leadership. And, and that again goes back to- Look, look, but, you can't, but, but here's my thing. You, but the lack of leadership, 100%, I'm with you. And it was super diluted. And there's like this weird gray area in which we're locked down, but we don't know why. And we're wearing masks. Some aren't wearing masks. But if you tell me, if give, give me a reason why, and I'm on board. But if you just say, do this and don't give us a reason, and I don't trust you in the first place, it's hard to. It's hard but to see, listen. that's the problem. Because problem- I, I think the left and right yeah. wasn't straight. Well, listen, the problem is what you just said is is when you find out things like when you see Newsom at the restaurant, you see Pelosi getting the hair thing done, you go, oh my God, like are they are they taking this seriously or not? But what you just said, you have you guys are smart enough mm-hmm. to be able to look at and be critical thinkers and go, All right, you know what? Yes, I wasn't trusting it before. Now the data says, you know, yeah, obviously it's basic logic. Stay far from each other. The odds of you getting that guy's spit in your face are going to be diminished with yes. a mask on the odds are going to be diminished it's just basic logic yes and and the problem becomes where you're right we have this skepticism in our head and now we're going like who's telling the truth who's not telling the truth? but that goes back to what i was problem. saying my number one issue with trump as president was 
a lot of people voted for him because they were like, we want an outsider. We want someone who doesn't. We don't want a politician. We don't want. We want someone who comes from. And I said that's. And I said it in my in my in my Netflix special, my previous special. I was like, this is the only thing in the world where people go, I want an outsider. You never go to get an operation and go, I want a guy who's never done <laughs> surgery to operate on my eye, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And and so we see what happens when you bring in an outsider. Because I don't know about you guys, but I'll be honest with you. Listen, I'm not saying Biden is perfect, mm -hmm. but I will tell Perfect. you, man, ever since these guys have come in, America's I, chilled out. I've breathed a sigh of relief. <laughs> I agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Dude, first I of all, agree. we were under four years. I feel like we were bombarded by Trump's, again, I don't care if you like him or not, you have to admit, every morning, he'd wake up, 10 tweets, 20 tweets. So it was like it was like the game Tetris. It's unprofessional. The, the, yeah. the, the, the yeah. blocks are coming, and you're like, oh, my God. I, 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 and I yeah. go, these past two weeks, I've been so happy to wake up and just, just listen in. to just, re, just real Relax. news. Yeah. They're like, oh, there's global warming. I'm like, yes, there is. <laughs> yeah. you know, there's a pandemic. Yes, we're going to die. You know? <laughs> but, 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 but like a lot of comics and like a lot of those late night uh, hosts, what, what are you gonna, gonna do now? What are you gonna yeah. do now? Trump's Bro, out. You no, gonna, are you gonna I, still do Trump bits? No, no, no. Listen, like let, that's your game plan. Let me tell you something, because as again, as someone who's on the left, and I'm an Iranian American, I'm an immigrant, right? Uh -huh. And my mom, first of all, a lot of Iranian Americans turn around and, and like Trump, 100%. including my own mother. That was an interesting one. Mm -hmm. So it was funny because when Trump, when, when Biden won, I called my mom. I'm like, did you see he won? And she's like, well, now what are you gonna make jokes about? I was like, you too, mom. You're you're, you're coming at me with <laughs> <laughs> right now, <laughs> right now. But the truth is, I, listen, man, I. I was doing jokes. I, I'm I'm oh, no, I'm happy to go back to talking about my kids. Yes. I'm I'd love by the way, Biden's gonna do shit that we're gonna make fun of, oh, right? Yeah, naturally. And, and people always say they always go, people ask me, they go, Trump must have been good for comedy. I go, motherfucker. No. no, because two reasons. Number one, he said so much crazy shit, it was never you you, you could never keep up with him. Mm -hmm. Right? He'd say one thing. I remember he was like, little rocket man. I go, I need a little rocket man joke. Pocahontas, I need a Pocahontas joke. Stormy Daniels, I need Stormy Daniels joke. And you go on and on and on, and you can't keep up with the guy. So that was number one. The and everyone's doing it. And everyone's doing it. But you got, you know, you got your point of view yeah. on it. But it's like, as if you're a touring comedian, if you're not a late night host who's got writing team and going, today Trump said, and let's go down it. It's hard to keep up. If you're a comedian who's going to spend a year working on your hour and then go do that hour... And you do that hour, and then people watch it. They're like, "Wait, when did Trump say Rocket Man? Yeah. Oh, that was before the impeachment. The timing is on. Yeah. And before the, it's, it's done. Too hard to keep yeah. up. That's number one. The second thing that nobody talks about, and I felt it firsthand. And I don't know, Brendan, if you ever talk, or if you guys ever talk about um, uh, 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 Trump in your stand up or not. But I stay away from. I it. don't. I, I'm very political because, again, coming from an immigrant background, I'm like, I got to talk about this, right? If it's your thing, yeah, I double down. On I that. have to, and, and so and so it was interesting because as much as people go, oh, he was good for comedy, I realized once he's gone, I realized that I had a certain level of anxiety because people got so sensitive to Trump jokes, Trump supporters. Yeah. So before Trump became president, when he was just the host of The Apprentice, I would do Trump jokes. People would chuckle. Life goes on. Mm -hmm. Once he starts running for president, starts saying some racist shit. Trump's personal. Starts saying some other shit. People come on board and they go, yeah, I love it. He's saying what he's saying. What he, he means what he means. What he, yeah. And then you do a joke and people start yelling at you in the audience. So I, I felt like there was a certain level of anxiety. Anytime I would, because the way I would do my show is I would do like kid, kid, kid material. Now I'm going to my Trump jokes. So I would kind of like Me too. put my toe in by going, all right, guys, I'm about to do some Trump jokes. You need, you all need to calm the fuck down. I'm not making fun of your grandmother. Yeah, my own mother's a Trump supporter. I've had to deal with this shit, so just yep. relax. And I'm gonna do some jokes about Trump, and I might even have some Biden jokes. Just, just calm down. Yep, bro. And I swear to God, even when you do that, sometimes still they still get weird. Does this get it's so that caused anxiety for me? Yeah. Like, why is it as a comedian I need in America? Why is it as a comedian in America? I'm not. I'm not in. You know, some despotic country in some. You know, some far off land where they go. Don't make fun of the king. Yeah, you're not in North Korea. I'm not yeah. in North Korea, right? Yeah. I'm in the United States, where we're supposed to, as an audience member, you're supposed to come and be like, you know, that was. You know, I, I didn't find that funny, but I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to no, lose my mind. Mm -hmm. So I had that anxiety going the whole time, yeah. and I still like when I when I slowly put my toe into the Trump water. I'm still. It's it's become a cult in a way in that it's fine to be a support. I, I love Barack Obama, but you come and tell me, hey, Barack Obama, uh, under Barack Obama, there was the the most drone attacks ever 
than any previous president. I'll be like, you're right. He wasn't perfect. He did some bad yeah, shit. Yeah, whatever president you side with, I can pick apart some of it. And, it's just that comes with the two. And you got to, and that's what America's about is we should laugh at our Agreed. leaders. We can, we can make fun of our leaders. Why? Because we're supposed to expose their hypocrisy, whether it's Gavin Newsom yes. or Nancy Pelosi or Donald Trump. We should be able to be like, wait a minute. You're, you're going to the restaurant, tell me, and I can't go. You going to the restaurant? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So as much as people go, oh, what are you going to talk about now? He was, you know, he was good for comedy. I go, man, I feel the level of anxiety that guy caused me mm -hmm. in my day to day, and then even in stand up, it's just it was nuts. Wasn't worth it. Yeah. No. How old are your kids? Uh, I got a ten year old daughter and a twelve year old son. Oh damn, you're in it. Yeah. I got. I got a, a five. He'll be five in February and a one year old. Oh, that's adorable, man. The best. Two boys. Dude, it's the best. Kids are the best, and we just got a pandemic puppy as well. I was never a dog person. Just got the dog and a dog. Uh, golden doodle. Golden doodle. Oh, oh, those are she's adorable. My brother Love has one. Thing. Yeah. Sleeps with them. Do you have? Do you have kids? You have dogs? I mean, no dogs. I want dogs. My girl doesn't want dogs. She doesn't want dogs. Are a beast, man. She doesn't want the responsibility. Well, you know, it's a lot. I will tell you. Once your kids are a little bit older, kids love them. Love them. And and if you get like if, if you go and get you know you could do your research a little bit see which ones are which we got we got the golden doodle simply because uh, she's hypoallergenic yeah they don't shed too they don't right? shed and my yeah. daughter had some allergies and stuff so we're like all right you know what let's let's go ahead and do it a dog in the pandemic though it's probably the best time to do it because you don't have to leave it at home well that's you're with I, it twenty four seven yeah I was nervous just like your 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 lady is that because I've never had a dog and I was like oh my god I was ever. Just, we, never, we had a dog once for two days. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't count. No, because we, well, we come from an immigrant background. Yeah. So when I would tell my dad I want a dog, I want a dog, he didn't understand what that meant. And like, and, and the Iranian <laughs> culture, listen, a lot of immigrants don't, like the, dogs aren't big in a lot of immigrant cultures. Yeah. Like in Iran, dogs are known to be like, they say najes, which means um, like dirty. Like you're not supposed to, like there's wild dogs like running in the streets. Dog. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, of course, in the past 40 years, I'm sure it's changed a lot. But when I was a kid, that's how it was. Mm -hmm. And so when I'd be like, I want a dog, I want a dog, my dad said, like, no, no, no. And then finally when I was, I don't know how old I was, but he went to his friend who had two dogs that had grown up together. <laughs> and he's like, give me your, give me one of those dogs. <laughs> this shows you the mentality of like, let me the, have one of those. The, the, yeah, the macho what? man immigrant mentality where there's no like, let me do the research, find out if it's okay to separate, separate. a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you got two, let me have one, let me have one. my son. And yeah. the other guy's like, sure, take him. <laughs> his dog sure. came, bro. He was with us for 48 hours. He was the most depressed dog I've ever seen. <laughs> he wanted to go home. <laughs> he, Get me out of here. He wanted want no part you know, of it. Dad, where'd you find this dog, I was, like, I was like, let's go for He's a walk. He's writing a journal. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. sad. Very emo. Very emo <laughs> dog. Very emo. Very he has emo. eyeliner on. Yeah. 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 He wore a black trench coat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Weird, man. Yeah, so, so that was... Um, that's all I had. And then, so this time around, my wife and kids were like looking at golden doodles, labradoodles, all that. Mm, and and it's funny ones. because like you just said, I kept saying, I was like, I don't know, guys, I don't know. Finally, we we're sitting there one time and just in front of the TV and she's, she's all over the Instagram doodle pages. And she's like, hey, there's a dog available. Should we get him, get her? And I was like, I don't know if it's the right time. And she's like, you always say it's not the right time. Mm. And then I was like, why are you asking me when you already know the answer? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and we went and got her. And man, it's the sweetest thing in the world you love it i love this dog yeah. man she's so dope are, I mean, you, are your kids in school my kids are doing the zoom school oh nothing worse these poor kids <sighs> i feel so bad for them but i will tell you they've been thriving under it and really yeah God both, bless both, them, man. both of my kids first of all they're in private schools that have done a great job of handling it i can't believe your private school is not open they, well no they're, they're they're staying you know they're, they're they go by all the guidelines and all that stuff and and i've run into friends of mine who are like yeah my my kids in public school and the teacher shows up for one hour a week and then I got to teach the rest of the week. I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's different. I, yeah, get you know, what you pay for. Get what you pay for. <laughs> yeah. No, but my kids have done a pretty good job. My daughter is constantly like, she, so we got a second floor upstairs. All I hear is like jumping up and down. She's constantly like doing dance contests and yeah. stuff. Oh, TikTok? And, um, just what, I don't know what they do. She's just like, I just hear her. I'm like, our roof's going to fall. Like I go, I go, is she in a dance school? What's she doing? <laughs> yeah. um, and then my son is a big Dungeons and Dragons guy. So he's been running D&D stuff. Out Damn. of his room, a little bit ner uh, nerdy kid. Uh, he's actually. The, Let me the, call your son a nerd. Definitely no. no <laughs> definitely. <laughs> How's it you call him? He's not throwing a nerd? football around. You know, <laughs> no, 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 he's always no. outside. No, 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 no. <laughs> he's actually a really good athlete. Yeah, but choose. Be honest with dragons. you. Yeah, I, I love. You don't even understand, dude. This, this hit me one time when I was doing shows at the San Jose Improv, okay. and I'm walking around with, with my friends, and we go on the campus of San Jose State University, and they happen to have a robotics competition where these, these kids have yeah. built robots. 
And the whole game of the robot game is like there's a ball and these guys with their robots, they're all nerdy. They're like got their robots and the robots picking up the ball and running it and throwing it into the net. And these kids, are, you know, and, and then we walk out and we happen to overhear some conversations. And these kids are like high school kids. 16, you know, 15, 16, and they're all like, yeah, you know, I, I thought the, the, the you know, I, I thought the, uh, the, the, the mechanism that we had going was quite appropriate, right? I think, and I overheard them and I turned to my friends and I go, oh my God, Lord, let my kids be like these kids. Like, they're not somewhere hanging out at 7 Eleven asking for some dude to be like, hey, can you buy me some beer? Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Which is the kind of shit we were doing. Uh -huh. Me too. But yeah, I'm, dude, I was all for it. So, as much as like what you just said, my, you know, the, bo you know, both kids are somewhat, you know, they're athletic, mm -hmm. but I'm leaning into no the nerd. nerds run the world. Man. I'm leaning no, into that. I want bro. that little Elon Musk. I want uh, that little Jeff Bezos. Yeah, I want the sure. kid that I don't have to because you think about yourself. Like it's a miracle that uh, some of us, when you start talking to you about like your 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 youth, it's a miracle that we're still here. Uh, nuts. But the world's different Insane. too, though. You world's know? different. But we did stupid shit. Like we were like 16 years old. I remember there was a Volkswagen Fox, which is like a Jetta. But uh, like a Jetta on a diet, it's like yeah, super skinny. The front's more narrow, small. Yeah. Like you could put, like you could probably pick up the, the yeah, Volkswagen the Fox. This? No, that's a newer one. No, no, yeah, that one right there, right the there, yeah, one, that yeah. one right there, that one, the Fox. Yeah, that thing. You see how small? Yeah. So that's a nineteen ninety. That's about the car we had. My mm -hmm. friend had that car, and look, it's a, and I think it was very, it was probably this one. It's like a, you got you got a two seat, you know, two door, and then so I remember specifically. Six of us in that car, coming home from a party, in uh, uh, on like in the backwoods of Marin County, where you go like to like Stinson Beach and Muir Muir Beach and stuff. Great, area. it's all windy roads, yeah. two lane, and I'm pretty sure the guy driving it had been drinking too. Y'all speed, but we got the music blaring and we're in the back. Woo! Every turn, we're like, yeah, <laughs> living stupid, yeah. stupid. Stupid and lucky to be here. And you want you want your kid in his basement playing Dungeons and Dragons. I want my kid being like, Dad, I uh, got a Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah. Dad, come see this and, robot. Uh, <laughs> you don't even know, bro. I sometimes when he talks to me, I don't even know what he's talking about. He's like, you know, I'm 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 the uh, DM. I go, DM, what's that? Uh, like, do you direct message someone? No, I'm a dungeon master. <laughs> <laughs> I go, the, uh, the, I'm, You're loving it. Yeah. I'm like, is oh. Dungeons and Dragons big again? Dude, it's, it's huge. It's not been big. Bro. Oh, it, it's, it's back in a major By way. the way, oh. one of my neighbors down the street, and, and I, it's been announced, his name's Jonathan Goldstein. He's the He and John Daly, they are the um, they they wrote and directed Game Night and The New Vacation. These guys have done a yeah. lot of stuff. Yeah. They have written and will be directing a Dungeons & Dragons movie with Chris Pine. Oh, wow. Michelle oh, Rodriguez. Because, Pine, because there was one they did and it went really bad, right? They did a Dungeons no, & Dragons. No, this is like a big, this one's a big deal. So it's coming up, and and um, and it is it's huge. Like and, and like guys like um, I'll tell you who's doing it is uh, Vin Vin Diesel plays Dungeons and Dragons. We love Vin oh, Diesel. Um, yeah, we love Vin uh, Diesel. Our boy uh, 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 so, well, who was Sofia Vergara's husband. What's his name again? Oh, oh Joe Mad Joe Mad Mangello. Mangello. Yeah, no, no, who is uh, Mangello? Mangello. Yeah, yeah. He's Mangello. a big D and D. I mean, these D and D is back. There he is, Ma Manganiello. He's a great guy. Um, he was. It was actually interesting. He oh. was on. He was on Colbert, and and. I, I, I'm a fan of Joe's and I'm a fan of Stephen Colbert's and I tried to watch it because I was like oh this is going to be this is going to be interesting they started talking d and I had no idea what they were talking about there it is yeah there it is look at him yeah he's a stud yeah, yeah, yeah. I like him so all of that there's it geeks out over Dungeons right yeah so it's back <laughs> and as a father and I don't know how you think but as a father I actually got because my parents again being immigrant parents they were like I looked at you guys. I look at the the Asian people. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? That's a fair guess. What though. kind of what kind of what's your background? Uh, Vietnamese. Vietnamese. What's your background? Korea. Korea. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Immigrant parents do not want comedian, right? No. They want lawyer, doctor, engineer. One hundred percent. We yep. came all the way from another country. Get your ass over there. Get your education. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I want to be able to say, my son, the doctor. Yes. My daughter, the doctor. That's I want to so be able to fun. say. We it. talked about it many times on the show too, dude. So that's yeah. part of it, right? So they pushed me in such a direction. Now, Brendan, how old were you when you started doing stand up? Uh, what am I? Thirty-seven. So I've been doing almost six years. So, so thirty-one. So you started even later than me. How yeah. old were you when you started? Uh, I was uh, what three years ago. Okay, uh, I was tw twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. And no, how old? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Yeah. So I started twenty-six. And that's late, right? And that's late. Kind of like later, I yeah. look at guys like like I, I remember hearing Dane Cook talk about seventeen, Chappelle fourteen. Right? Yeah, it's insane. And when I was seventeen, I wanted to do it. I was doing plays in my school. My teachers all said you're good at it. My teachers would. I, I used to do. I was doing a 
I was doing a play, I think it was junior high school. My parents came to watch it. You know, these immigrant parents that show up, they got the suit on. First of all, immigrant <laughs> parents. <laughs> suit. <laughs> they, suit. Yeah. They, yeah, it's for a play. Suit, like, <laughs> they think it's a fucking Copacabana or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm the fourth lead in yeah. middle school play, Bro, man. Play, they, showed up, they showed up in the suit, and then the, and then the director, like, you know, after the show, the director's being nice, and she's you know, talking to my parents. It's like, you know, your son has the, the has the the it factor. He's he it. Could, he, he has could it. do this. Mm -hmm. And my parents, oh, thank you, thank you. We get in the car. My dad's like, that bitch is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So you get in the car. This cool. you, <laughs> you are not. Disregard everything you say. Dad is talking that shit. Is stupid. <laughs> so I mean, I was like, oh my god. So I got I got sidetracked for a long time, and that's why it was 26 when I finally did it. Yeah. So because of that, with my kids, I tell them, guys, if you find a passion, run with it. I'm with you 100. percent So at. when I see this kid do D and D, I'm all run about it. it. Yeah. But I will I'm tell you, the other day, I had that moment in my head where I was like. I ask him, I like, what? what's the end? I, I was like, buddy, can I just ask you a question about D&D? &D? He's like, sure. I go, when you do D&D, &D, like, does it, is it exercising your creativity? Yeah. Is it kind of like just passing time? Because in my mind, I'm, I'm hoping he goes, yeah, dad, we create it. I go, okay. And he said, he goes, he goes, they create the world. I go, all right, okay. So I'm thinking to myself, maybe he'll be like a, uh, a what is it, R.R. R. Martin or J.R. Martin, the guy who wrote the the uh, Game of Thrones books? George R.R. Oh, George R. Yeah. I'm like, maybe yeah. he'll just write, the, maybe he'll write Game of Thrones or something. Yeah. Like, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in my yeah. mind, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. You know, that's like, anyway, anyway, that's yeah. a fucking, you know, yeah. you know that's a so, long shot. But, you know. It, it's tough, yeah, with with my kid, uh, Tiger, he, yeah, he'll be five in February because, you know, my fight background, sports background, so I'll watch fighting sports and I'll go dad boom boom pow and he'll always want to fight I'm like yeah but you're not gonna do like i know you enjoy it with your dad but you're not gonna do this yeah my kids don't grow up in this house and fight in in the cage yeah like, yeah that's not what that's not how it goes it's down. it's an interesting it's an interesting journey we go through because like you just said you want your kid i mean that's all you want you want your kid to just be passionate about whatever it is and again when you think about the kind of stuff you did you worry about your kid because oh my though, god but also you crawl i don't mean to interrupt you but also like I made some sacrifices and crawled through some shit and have CT, so you don't have to do this. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> but if you choose to do it, then you're gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing you can do. There's my dad didn't want do. me to fight. My dad didn't want me to do stand up. If yeah. they're if their heart is set on it, they're gonna do it, and you better jump on for the ride. And that's the beauty. If you're lucky enough to have a passion about yeah. something, I always tell people, I go, you find that passion, go for it. Whatever that passion is, because that's when it gets tricky. If they don't have something they want to do, like a passion, that's where they get into drugs, exactly. join a gang. Exactly, exactly. And it's and it's and it's a you know, I think I always tell I remind comedians we are very lucky to have found our passion. Yes. And so number one, if you can find your passion, you're you're part of the elite group of people in the world who know what they want to do. Mm -hmm. If you're able to make a living doing that passion, now you're oh, like boy. you yeah. know, super elite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. because and then I run into people a lot of times who go, I don't know, like I'm stuck and I don't know what what to do. And I go, okay, go back to what you used to do as a child. What did you used to do? You used to, you, you used to play baseball? Well, um, maybe you should go try see if you can become a baseball coach for a, for a little league team or yeah. something. Find a way back into that yeah. thing because I just feel we get lost in life. A lot of people get lost, you know? Because bills, right? Bills, and I think you, you, uh, you pile it all on yourself because it's the, it's the being afraid of trying that thing. Mm. For so you me, do what's safe. You do what's safe. So mm -hmm. for me, for the longest time, I kept jabbing like the idea of I want to do the acting, I want to do the comedy. And my mom had put into me, you can go be a lawyer and then just do comedy on the side. So that was in the back of my mind. So I was gonna, I, I studied political science undergrad, thinking I'm gonna be a lawyer. Then my junior in Cal? was that in, 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 in at Berkeley, yeah, Cal, UC Berkeley. Okay. Then, uh, then my junior year, I went to Italy to study abroad. And there was a professor, I love what he was doing. I go, maybe I'll be a professor. And I go, that's a good compromise because that'll combine like standing in front of a crowd and speaking, but also my parents can, you know, brag. Check you know, that box. Yeah, it's a, it's a formidable job, right? Yeah. And when I came back, my mom was freaking out. No, you gotta be a lawyer. And I was like, what's up? I thought professor was pretty good. She's like, no, there's no money for professors. I'm like, point, what do you mom. know? Yeah, my mom was point. like, but also a good point. But good point, yeah, good, good point, point, right? And then uh, she's like, you're going to be wearing those jackets with the elbow patch. That's yeah. not good. <laughs> jackets? <laughs> jackets with the elbow <laughs> patch. Yeah. It's not good. It's not a good look. Um, so then Mom she, sounds awesome. So then, she, um, so then when I, and then I, I, then I got into a PhD program for poli sci. And when I dropped out of that was when I decided to go and pursue this because I had that, see, I had the fear always of, of trying it. 
because I thought, well, how does one even make it in this world? I have no idea. So I was good at it, and I was doing plays on the side, yeah. and I was having fun, but I had a job to bring the money in because I didn't know how you're going to make money. And I remember talking to this guy. Um, I was working in an advertising agency. That was my day job at that point. And this guy named Joe Ryan, who is he was in his 60s at the time. And he goes, hey, he saw me do a play. He goes, you're pretty funny. Have you thought about doing this? I go, yeah, I've been thinking about it. I'm going to wait to raise money, you know, save up some money, and then go for it. And he goes, listen, man, I'm in my 60s right now, and there were some things I wanted to do in my 20s, and I never did it. Because so he goes, if you really have a passion for it, you should go for it. And Smart I was 26. Man. That was a light bulb moment when I realized you live once, you got to live for you. Do yeah. what you want to do. You can't live for your parents. You can't live out of fear. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what you guys were saying is like the people that, that, that don't go for their passions, I think a lot of times it's this fear that if they go for it, like they're gonna throw away everything they have. They, you know, the the rent or the bills yeah. or whatever. But but I think too with with stand up, like and for your parents or even my parents, like it's like oh I want to do stand up, but there's no there's no like clear path. Like like if you want to be a professor or whatever, if you want to make the NFL or whatever you want to do in that space, there's always a path. If I want to make the NFL, I play pop one and then I go high school. If I'm good at that, then I get a scholarship, play college football, then I get drafted in the NFL. Pretty clear path. Yeah. Stand up. Yeah. It's like everyone's path is different. It goes different. here, I start here, I start yeah. this, thing, I start. Yeah. So there's like no blueprint for But it. even that, like let's go back to the football thing, right? So if I'm some guy who's, you know, I mean there was a movie made about the guy who was visible. Uh, was that what it was? The the Philadelphia Eagles yeah, kicker, Mark right? Wahlberg. Yeah, Mark yep. Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg, right? Uh, Papali. Yeah, wasn't he like a teacher or something? He was a teacher. Yeah, he was a teacher, and then he, they had open tryouts. Yeah, so there you go. Now he also ran a four four forty. Well, what I was going to say, it's not. Listen, by the way, it's not like you, you could be sitting there going like, "Oh, I'm sixty years old, and I've been you know a couch potato my whole life. I'm going to go you know play uh, quarterback for the whatever you know yeah. the Saints." Yeah. But the fact is, if you have a passion that is something that like let's say you are 60 years old and you've been working as an accountant for the past 40 years and it's just just draining your soul and your passion was football as a kid maybe you were pretty good what's to stop you from saying all right you know what on the weekends i'm gonna go help coach a team i'm just gonna just to be out be in there, that world yeah just to put yourself around it, it right not everyone's gonna be a comedian that wants to be a comedian but they can work as managers they can work in the club do they something can, they can do something so that's i think that's part of it i think people are afraid because they feel like well, it's uh, the it's, they're afraid because the unknown. Because if you unknown. if someone comes to you and goes, "Hey, I want to do stand up," yeah. like, all right, dude, go to yeah. open mics. Yeah, you know, start there and try and yeah. build a following. Yeah, so, yeah. big know? unknown. Yeah, I think you have to love the journey first. Yeah, you got. You have to love the journey. Well, that, see, that's people. a lot of people don't even know about. You got to love the journey. I think that I think that that one of the other things that guy said to me, Joe Ryan, it was all about like, can you can you live without this? You know, you hear a lot of you hear a lot of actors say that. Like, I think Morgan Freeman or maybe it was Tom Hanks or somebody was like, "If you want to get into acting, ask yourself, can I live without it? If you say yes, then live without it, because there's going to be people who can't live. Yeah, without Yeah, you're it. not going to make it, right? Yeah. So similarly, you know, whether it's like you know, you listen to Bill Gates' story. Bill Gates and Steve Wozniak were in their garage building Microsoft. Steve Jobs. No, Steve Jobs was Apple. Yeah, I thought Wozniak was with Steve, right? Okay, so who was with uh, Paul Allen? Was with Paul Allen? Paul, yeah. So you're right, you're right. Paul Allen and uh, and Bill Gates were in their garage building um, uh, Microsoft, mm -hmm. and so they had to stay. They were up late. They were doing whatever they had to do. And there's a drive and a passion that you have to have for that. Like I'm the kind of guy. So here's how I know I would have never built Microsoft because as soon as I undid that computer, I'd look at all those wires. I'd be like, like oh my god, that's a lot work. of work. Yeah. yeah, you know, I'll come back, but. But I had tried different career paths out of college. I tried like, you know, side salesman or, you know, like a, a, a professor thing and advertising and all that stuff. And it was one of those things where when I got faced with a, an obstacle, I was like, I'm out. I'm not going to hang out. Yep. Coming to stand up, mm -hmm. the first thing they teach you is get on stage as much as you can, write as much as you can. Mm -hmm. So I'm showing up in coffee shops. I'm showing up in church basements. I'm showing up at Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. You name it, and I'm the, there. And this is in NorCal? Where you this was here in SoCal. Up? I started in LA. Oh you, oh, you started down here? Yeah. So I was showing up everywhere I could. You know, you'd be telling a joke, and the guy, the barista, starts making that 
cappuccino. So you're like, espresso, you know, so just yeah, out of shit. Exactly. You're like, why'd the chicken line? cross the road? And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it was it was a lot of that. And then you become a regular at the comedy store, which is the first club I got Did into. Did you get passed by Mitzi? Mitzi, yeah, yeah. That was oh, that was awesome. Yeah, man. She was amazing. Beautiful. Mitzi Shore was an amazing human being. I got her, so I got I'm I, I became a regular, it was either ninety nine or two thousand. I started doing stand up in ninety eight. So ninety nine or two thousand, she was still showing up and she was sitting in that back chair. And um Did and, someone vouch for you? Yeah, so uh, so I'd been coming. So this this is what I had going for me. I first of all I'd been doing plays since I was twelve years old. So when I stand on stage, I'm it's comfortable. Home. Yeah, I'm good, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Then I took a stand up comedy class where they kind of helped us write, and I kind of learned how to write a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then I just started hitting the the like I said every place I could hit to perform. And along the way, since I was I had a day job at an ad agency, I had access to any kind of art material I needed to to produce little postcards. To pass out to people, oh, to be like, like flyers, like flyers. So yeah. this is before social media. So I Word would get people's, yeah. yeah, I would get people's uh, mailing addresses, and I would mail them like monthly postcards with me on it. Be like, you know, here's the five shows I'm doing this month. Hit me up, free tickets, oh, whatever. Mm. And I had my family. I had all these people. Like I would reach out to coworkers. I'd be like, I'm doing a show. So I was yep. able to bring that people. Grind. These were all bringer shows. Mm -hmm. So I'd show up at the bringer show, which, as you guys know, it's like. 10 horrible comedians, right? With each bringing some people. Well, I always succeeded in bringing like four or five or whatever that number was to the show. So that helped the bookers be like, oh, this guy brings people. And secondly, out of the 10 people who were horrible, I was maybe two of the less horrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so my star, like, like in that circle of bookers, people were like, oh, book this guy, book this yep. guy. So slowly but surely... Start getting booked, and then and then I, I've been doing a show. I think it was at, at Masker's Cabaret. This was a, a a restaurant on Third Street, and the people booking it were like, "Oh, we have a show in the Belly Room at the Comedy Store. You want to come do that?" I was like, "Sure." Now I'm showing up at the Comedy Store. I'm doing Belly Room shows at the Comedy Store. There was a guy named Skippy Low. This guy was a trip. What a great name. Skippy Low was like old school from like the Milton Berle age. Yeah. Like, and we couldn't tell. He's very like. Um, sexually ambiguous. We didn't know if it was a guy or a girl. It was really hard. It's like mm. Pat. Yeah, he's very Pat. Yeah, he's very Pat. Pat. And his name's Skip, oh, Skippy. So we're like, is it Skippy? So the first time I saw him, he had like Skip white up. hair. He had his own cable access show where he would interview like, you know, washed up stars from yeah. the 40s. And he ran a show in the belly room with this lady named Belinda Foster who was like his, the comedian who he would help, he would have her like run run the show, but he was the boss of the show. Yeah. And this guy Skippy, the first time I show up, I, again I don't know who I don't know what he is, who he is. He's wearing a black turtleneck, and 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 his chest is a little like it, it's protruding. Can I ask titties? Yeah, guys, <laughs> that guy titties. Yeah, that, yeah. And I swear to God, I was like, hi, I'm here to do the Skippy Love Show. Yes, darling, and he's gay, right? So he's yeah. like, yes, darling, that way. And I'm like, and his voice is here, so I'm like. I don't know if that's a guy or a girl. I have no idea. Yeah. And do I say thank you, sir? Thank you, ma'am. I don't uh, know what I'm going to say. So I'm trying to be very polite. Yeah. Go upstairs, I'm, you know. And I've gotten booked because I'm able to bring people. Mm -hmm. And the funniest thing would happen. So you'd be there, and first of all, Skippy starts drinking as the night goes on. He's drinking red wine, oh. and he calls everybody Mary, which is like an old school gay thing. He'd be like, "Hello, Super Mary, <laughs> Mary." I've never heard that. Calls never everybody, hey, either. Mary, yeah. Mary. I'm Mary. You're yeah. Mary. Everyone's Mary. Yeah. And uh, and it was funny because he would get drunker and drunker, and as the show would go on, he would tell Belinda, "Here's the lineup, right? I have I've brought 20 people into the belly room, which seats like 50 people. Yeah. Exactly. Half the audience is mine. Yeah. Belinda, when am I going up? Oh, darling, you're next. You can be next. You can be next. And then I see Skippy comes over. Darling, put him on next. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then so she puts the next person on. Next, he just gets more and more drunk. And then it would get to a point where if somebody wasn't doing well, this was the funniest shit. I swear to God, this like, and everyone's rookie comedians, right? Yeah. So no, you know, no one's killing, killing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw a few times some poor guy would go up there and be like, "Hi guys, how's it going?" And like, you know, thirty seconds, forty-five seconds, one minute, no laughter. Out of nowhere, Skippy comes zooming up, grabs the mic. All right, everybody, here we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. That's the fucking no. best. All right, here no. we go. That's so funny. Yeah, thank you. We'll it's see you again sometime. Like, just <laughs> literally. And that comic's like, shit. <laughs> oh, Dude, the comic's like, what the hell? <laughs> just, that, that's the Apollo Sam, man. Dude, right? yeah, that's Apollo Sam, man. But Apollo. the gay time. And, and, so, and so when that, so that was my, my, uh, my foot into the comedy store. And I, I'll never forget one time, because again, I'm a young comedian. 
and I got into comedy because I was a fan of comedy. So this is like right around 2000, and George Carlin is working on like his next special. So he's at the comedy store running in the main room, running a bunch of shows. Mm -hmm. And this was the, this was when the comedy store's dark ages because there was a time when the comedy store in the early 2000s, nobody was showing yeah, up. Yeah, it was terrible. Damn. But on the weekends, if George Carlin's showing up, that's going to be a packed room. So he was on the main room going on. Original room, Dice had just gone up. Mm. And I happened to be up in the belly room. And it was one of those like, pinch me moments where i was like holy shit i yep. was on stage yeah. the same time george carlin and andrew dice clay i go i'm not even a regular yet but i feel like i'm on the right path Damn, yeah. this feels, you know what i'm saying yeah. yeah and then um i started to get to know some comedians bobby lee some other guys is that and who you started with who like uh, who's your class my class was sam tripoli brett ernst sebastian oh. maniscalco oh um, uh, and then, you know, Al Madrigal came along, Steve Byrne, you know, because Al was from the Northern California, comes down, Steve Byrne from New York comes over, uh, John Caparulo, uh, yeah, Ren Azizi yeah. was a little younger than us. Just I'm trying to think who else. Just all good guys. Yeah. That's great. You know, That's a great idea. Like, I was there before, like, Whitney came later. I'm trying to think who else was part of that. Sean Polofsky was there, but she was probably uh, there a little bit before me. And you were there when, uh, Sebastian, I heard when Sebastian first started, He's kind of the butt of the joke. Like they made fun of me so bad at stand up. I'll tell you. First of all, before I, uh, as I was listening to people there, Rogan at the time was there, and he was one of these guys killing it, but doing his fifteen minute sets. Joey Diaz was there. Brian Holtzman was there. This was like was it, Callen there back then? I think he came. Callen like was. He was kind of in and out. He wasn't in as much. Yeah. But it was an interesting time because it was they they say the 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 inmates were running the asylum. Yep. So what would happen is like on a Tuesday, first of all, she had, you know, all of us going in and out, but she also had made some people regulars that reminded her of, of other people, but they weren't that good. So there was a guy who reminded her of Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she had him on. I want to meet this guy. There was another guy who reminded her of Richard Pryor, had Jesus. him on. So she had all these people on. So like the Jim Carrey guy, I remember, because what would happen is the audience would watch and you would sense in the audience, like on, a on a Tuesday right now, you know, before the pandemic, on a Tuesday, original room was packed. Yeah, packed. Yeah. But when I was there, like in the early 2000s, on a Tuesday, it was like 10, 10 people. You're waiting to go up. You're like, please just don't leave. You know? mm -hmm. And then this guy, the, the, the guy who is, reminds Mitzi Shore of Jim Carrey is on stage doing the weirdest shit you've ever imagined. And the audience is kind of looking at each other like, is this... Is there a, a a camera? Like, is this part of a, a, a punk? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And so you would see people just leaving, and you'd be in the back going, "Come on, just please, just stay. I just want, I just want to get up on stage. That's all yeah. I want." And so it was really the dark ages at, at that point. And a guy like Sebastian, listen, he was finding his voice. So Sebastian and I started right around the same time, and I, I remember, geez, like he and I. You know, it goes back to what I was saying. Sure, you had the comedy store, but you still were taking whatever other gig you could. I remember specifically there was a gig I found um, in in uh, Newport Beach, and the gig was at a nice restaurant in Newport Beach, and they were going to give you 15 minutes of stage time, which at that point is fantastic, and you're going to get a salmon dinner. I'm like, Sebastian, you want to go? Deal. Let's go down. He's like, sure. He's going to drive. So we're driving on down on the 405 South. I swear to God. I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what happened, but as we're driving down, like this car swerves and we like fishtail a little bit. Like we came this close, like spinning out. Like I, Sebastian almost didn't happen, is what I'm trying to say. Oh wow! <laughs> because of a because of a salmon dinner. Like we would have got you know, <laughs> for a goddamn salmon <laughs> dinner. Because yeah. he, go he was working at like Four Seasons, I think he was like he, a waiter. There, so right? when Sebastian was working at Four Seasons, he would go on his break. He would take his break. He'd come up and do a set at the store in the savage. original and go back. Now I had. I had a, a similar thing happen where I, at some point, uh, you know, want to also do acting. So they were like, oh, there's a play at the Mark Taper Forum, which is a big play. There's a playwright named Tony Kushner who's written a, a play called Homebody Cobble. It's a, this guy, Tony Kushner, is an award winning, Tony Award winning uh, playwright. He wrote Angels in America. He's amazing. So I was like, oh, this is a chance to be part of something big. Um, but the part I had was I play a doctor who shows up at the beginning of the play, it's a three hour play. I show up at the beginning of the play. I, I recite like a two-minute monologue, and then I'm oh, gone for two beast. hours. That's beast. Yeah. But that's it. I'm gone. I'm gone. Like I just go. I was go sit upstairs and be like staring at the walls, yeah, and then like I started there. like learning how to play the guitar and stuff. Yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute. This is downtown LA. It's nighttime. If I time this right, I can go do a set 
and come back. Oh. So I started doing sets in the middle while the play was happening because I, I just had to come back for the for the curtain call. Yeah. So I'd do my my monologue and I'd be like, "Thank you very much." Get in the car, set. drive, do my set, come back, and they'd be like, "Curtain call." And that was it. Yeah. That's so dope. you take what you can. You know. Yeah. I, yeah I love the come. I love the come. Same thing in fighting. Like I love when there's like these prospects or in stand up. Like you're these open micers or you're just starting to start out. It's you and Sebastian driving down. You know to orange county and it's like the the hustle to get there man dude there's so many stories like, on getting in. so here's the thing so so mitzi saw me so mike marino you know mike marino uh, Ita- yeah. italian italian, dude, italian uh, yeah. yeah mike marino uh knew me because i he he i done a couple of his bringer shows he was teaching a stand-up class i took a stand-up class and that's where i was I yeah, mike, yeah. So yeah. Him, yeah he's a really nice guy funny guy funny and so he's the one I asked. I go, Mike, you're a regular. Would you recommend me? And he's like, I don't know this. And I go, come on, please. So he recommended me. And the way it works is, at least back then, is you would go up. You do three minutes in front of Mitzi. If she liked you, she said, come back next week, do six. If she liked you, come back next week, do ten. By the way, she doesn't tell you. Someone else tells you because she's not talking. to you. She's just sitting in the back like a mafia boss. You do your three. You walk off. And you get a call going. God, three. Come back and do six. You're three, from the booker. Man. Yeah, from three to six to ten. And this is by, by the way, this is potluck night. So mm-hmm. you're following all the open micers. Yep. It's a weird crowd. You better hope you do well. So when I did my tenth minute, the third time, I'm coming down. She's sitting in the back where the exit is. You got to walk past her. She's mm-hmm. just sitting in the little chair. It says exit sign, and she's eating her popcorn. And your whole time as you're walking down, you're like, please just grab my arm, grab my arm, because if she grabs your arm. That means she's gonna, you know, anoint you. But if she doesn't grab your arm, let you walk out after the ten minutes. That means you just went through all that shit for nothing. Come back in six months or a year, mm-hmm. right? She's already seen you and she doesn't like you. Get the hell out. So I'm walking past her, walking past her, and all of a sudden her arm reaches out. Ah. And in my head, by the way, let me backtrack what for a, a second. moment, dude. Let me backtrack for a second because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. listen, yeah. I got into comedy because of Eddie Murphy. Because when I was yeah. ten years old, nine years old, Eddie Murphy was huge, mm-hmm. and I had come down to L.A. at one point with some friends from Northern California when I was like thirteen years old, and we ended up staying at a hotel across the street from the comedy store. I didn't even know what the comedy store was, but I remember driving by the comedy store. And the friends that were showing us around, they go, you know, that's the biggest comedy club in the world. Eddie Murphy performs there. I was like, holy shit. Yep. So in my mind, I knew Eddie Murphy had performed there. So here I am now walking past Mitzi. She grabs my arm. And as she grabs my arm, I'm like, oh, my God, this is it. My career's being made. Eddie Murphy, oh, my God, this is crazy. She pulls me in. <laughs> I lean down. You know, she's older. She's getting sicker. But she still is there with us. And she goes, you're very funny. I go, thank you, Mitzi. She goes, I'm going to make you a regular. I go, thank you, Mitzi. She goes, have you ever thought about wearing the outfit? I go, what outfit? She goes, you know, the hat and the gown. I go, hat and gown? She goes, yeah. She meant a turban. (laughs) (laughs) But but, but she did this to a lot of guys. This is what people don't realize. She did to a lot of people. Bro. I, I, I'm she has guys like wear costumes and and shit all the time. All these thoughts are going through my head because I'm like... (laughs) Uh, what do I say? No, what? The and I go, I go. Kind of offended. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, I go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a great idea. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, and yeah, I, I, walk, term. I walk down the stairs. She, she goes, yeah. I'm gonna make you regular. Call call Monday for a veils. I walk down the stairs. I go in the hallway. I'm like, what the hell did I just agree to? You gotta find a turban. I'm gonna wear a turban and a friggin' dishdasha on stage. What the hell is this? Just your soul, and bro. Soul. My soul selling out and like the co- <laughs> just the co- sold out. The comics laughing. But at I me. would too. <laughs> I, I, do? I mean, Mitzi is like, hey, man, you ever thought about wearing a football jersey? Yeah. Like, hell yeah. Yeah. Man, that yeah. should be cool. Yeah. 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 So I so that I I thought in the back of my head, I go, you know, she's older. Maybe she forgets. And and, <laughs> no and, and, and dude, on Monday. Corey, who was the booker, they call, they call her Queen Corey. She was, um, she's uh, Freddie Soto's widow. She, at the time, she calls me up. She knew me. She goes, hey, Moss, congratulations. I heard you're a regular. I go, yeah, Corey, I am. She goes, and Mitzi said you're going to be wearing the outfit. I was like, oh. <laughs> so you have to go get the outfit? Bro, no. So then it was like two weeks of trying to figure out <laughs> oh, no. how to get out of the outfit. So, okay. you know, I was talking to my sister about it. And I'm trying to get advice from people. And then I told, Cor- I told Corey what you just said. I go, Corey, I don't know about wearing it out like a t- t- turban on stage and she goes Maz let me just tell you something she goes Mitzi is a genius if she sees something for you you gotta go with it she goes she helped Roseanne shop for her clothes to create the Roseanne character she helped Andrew Dice Clay become Andrew Dice Clay she is a genius now granted what you just said 
you know, if you talk to Mark Maron, he'll tell you when he became a regular, she told him to wear a scarf because you're the poet. Yeah, she wanted to always wear a scarf. Right? And Mark's like, what? And, and, and then there's another guy. His name was Joey Bananas, I think. And, banana suit, right? Jackie Banana, whatever his yeah. name. This guy, I guess, had an act where he would do 15 minutes and he wore like the banana suit at the last minute. Mitzi saw it one time. She goes, you're Jackie Bananas. You got to wear the banana suit the whole time. Oh, <laughs> this, you're this the banana guy. Yeah. We've we never seen him yeah, since. Yeah. <laughs> ruined his career? Maybe, maybe <laughs> so it wasn't, a, it wasn't like, yeah. listen, I love Mitzi. I've never met her, but the stories that love her support yeah. Some misses. A lot it of, wasn't a hundred percent. You know, Jerry Seinfeld came and she didn't pass Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah. no, I know yeah. that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it wasn't a hundred percent. And so, <laughs> it wasn't a hundred percent. Little miss. I mean, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm guessing the guy might have done a fruit of the loom co co yeah. uh, commercial or something. Chris no, suicide. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know what happened to him. So, so I was like, okay, how do I get out of this? So then I started negotiating because now Corey, by the way, who was the who was the you know the booker, she loved movies from the '30s. And I don't know if you guys know who Rudolph Valentino is, but he's he was this actor from the silent movie era, and uh, and he was um, he was th th there he is Rudolph Valentino, and he had a character called the sh the Sheikh right there. I, I think that's what it is. Rudolph did a Turner Classic yeah, with the turban on. Yeah, with the turban on. He was like this, you know, leading man. I think the, I think the character was called the Sheikh. Was it looks it the intense. Sheikh? Yeah. yeah, he was a, he was like he was like you know a, he was a heartthrob at the time right mm -hmm. gotcha and and the character was a like a white this. guy doing brown face huh? exactly yeah look at the lips so the character mm -hmm. there this son of the shake yeah he was the shake so the character was this like leading man hero right mm -hmm. so i'm just talking to i'm talking to Corey, and i'm like Corey, you know what rather than wearing like a turban maybe i can be like a leading like maybe that's a character i do in the middle of my act i've become the leading man the shake and she's like you know i love that idea i'm gonna tell mitzi you're gonna be the shake and I was like, ha, huh. I walked out. And I'm like, I just negotiated something I don't want to do. You don't want to <laughs> do it. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, I got to get out of this shit. How do I get out of this shit? And then I remembered, now, I was But born. you're still stoked you got passed. I'm happy I'm passed. Yeah. But I ain't going to wear no fucking turban. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's, that's what he's getting at. It's, a, it's a tough, it's a tough thing I don't to care do. who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not I'm, not. I'm not, no, I'm never, because the other, the other compromise I thought of was Eddie Murphy used to do a great character on Saturday Night Live called Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Which was his take on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. And this is now before September 11th, but still, you know, Muslim terrorist is still a thing. So I had had an idea for like a sketch or like a portion of a show where I would do Mr. Rahim's Neighborhood. Where, <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm and, in, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had that idea too. So I was like, maybe in the middle of my act, I'll turn into a character, you know. So I'm trying to find the right way. And, and the way I got out of this was, so again, I was born in Iran, mm. uh, left when I was six, grew up in America. Now, the Islamic Republic of Iran is a very oppressive government. And there's a lot of people in the West who are Iranians who hate that government. You know, no, I don't like the government. They're very oppressive to their people. Yeah. yeah, that's why they left. So, but there's all these Persian ch TV channels out of America where these people like will get on TV and they'll cuss out the leaders in Iran and just do all kinds of stuff. Well, there was one guy who used to dress up as a mullah who's like the clerics, like the turban and all that from Iran. And he used to dress up and make fun of them in videos. This dude one time, was at the federal building or somewhere there was a rally against the government of Iran and he's making fun of the you know the mullahs the clerics and some supporter of the clerics showed up definitely killed him no didn't kill him but they threw some rocks at the guy hit him in the eye blinded him oh wow when i heard that story i was like that's my out like, I, Mitzi, called, I don't want to do this dude, look at this yeah. guy i called up Corey. now at the time my father had moved back to iran so he was in iran oh, so wow. i came up with multiple For layers work? Uh, for work. So my father was a successful businessman, moves to America, buys a lot of property, ends up losing all of his money in the properties he bought, goes back to Iran to try and get his you know properties going again, and basically spends the rest of his life in Iran before he passes away in America in 2009. But um, he was in Iran at the time. And so the other problem is, so I was, I was layering all my reasons why I'm not going to wear the turbans. So I said, first of all, I said, listen, Corey, I said, you know, my father's in Iran. If I'm wearing the turban, somebody finds out I'm wearing a turban, they get upset at me, they go after him, yeah. number one. Number I've two, been. I said, these guys showed up and they threw a rock at that guy, they blinded him. <laughs> so I said, they could come after me, they could come after the club. 
<laughs> hey, come on. Now, now you can't do that anymore at all. Like that kind of gimmick stuff. Like you, there's yeah. no way. No, there's yeah. no way. Yeah. No, you couldn't do it then. Can you? <laughs> I can't imagine. There was a time where you could get away no, with no, like no, no, doing no, no, no. like, like the banana guy. Pretty much everyone who did that like went away because the whole point of comedy yeah. is your voice got to become it's you. Career suicide. You know. So b back then, if I showed up with Sebastian and Sam Tripoli and Brett Ernst, it was like, hey guys, uh, I got a turban on. They, I, you would I get know, lit. Listen, up. as soon as I walked away, I know they'd be like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> so I actually, um, it was funny. So as soon as I tell Corey that, she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know about that. She said, let me call you back. So obviously she calls Mitzi. Two minutes later, she calls up. She's like, just wear something comfortable. Yeah. yeah. We're in, baby. God. There you Thank go. God. Well, you know, you know, Hell Mitzi yeah. for Carlos Mencia, obviously he has his issues now, but his real name was Ned. Yeah. And she was like, no, 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 you're Carlos Mencia. You yeah. got to lean into the Mexican thing. Yeah. And even his though he's Honduran, he's Honduran. he's Honduran. He's Honduran. He's yeah. not even Mexican. Oh, wait, he's Honduras? Yeah. And he's he's like Honduran, and I think his mother is like, uh, um, uh, or one of his parents is from, from so they're Honduran, and... Um, a Hungarian or something like that. Like it's a mix. But again, oh, really? Carlos Mencia leaned in. But, but that was that was Mitzi yeah. saying, "Hey, you, really, yeah, your name's Carlos Mencia. Change your name. That's not going to work. Change your name. Yeah, and also lean into the Mexican." Thing. Listen, now she a, again. I think her thing was like trying to market you into something that she thought was would like sell tickets, you, right? Yeah. But but the fact is, again, hit and miss, right? So I was able to talk my way out of that. But then she comes back around and she does, she does a great thing in putting us together for a tour that ended up becoming the axis of evil and what happened was so in 2000 mitzi was very political like she would watch a lot of news and um there was an uprising with the palestinians and the israelis they called it an intifada so there was conflict in that part of the world again intifada intifada yeah so palestinians and, and, and israelis she's watching us cnn this is 2000 before september 11th and she says she has a light bulb moment she's like there's going to be a need for a positive voice for Muslim people in the near future. This is before mm. September 11th. Mm. So at the time, I was the only comedian of a Middle Eastern background at the club. And Mitzi had always had like, ladies night, black night, Latino night. So she decides to do a Middle Eastern night and she calls it the Arabian Nights. So we all start getting calls like, do you know any other Middle Eastern comedians? She had seen Ahmed Ahmed. Mm -hmm. So she tells him, come be a part of this. I had seen Aaron Cater one time. He's half Palestinian, half Mormon. I go, I know this guy. He comes on. Sam Tripoli. Here's here's now here's Armenian. Well, yeah. So here's where it, it. This is where my mind starts going to help my buddies out. Tripoli had auditioned for Mitzi because Tripoli was like his material might have been a little more. It wasn't leaning into his ethnicity at all, and it might have been a little edgier. So when he auditioned for Mitzi, his, you know, doing mm. the three to six to ten, whatever it was. She didn't pass them. And they were like, just you know, go away, come back later. Mm. Well, at this time, Duncan Trussell had become the booker of the club. And Duncan's friends oh, with, wow. yeah, Duncan's friends with Sam. He's friends with me, everything. Duncan's the one calling me up. Do you know any other Middle Easterners? And I go, Duncan, you know, Sam's last name is Tripoli. Tripoli is the capital of Libya. I wonder if there's any Middle Eastern in him. So I call up Sam. He's my buddy. I go, dude, are you Middle Eastern? He goes, well, my mom or somebody's Armenian. I'm half Armenian. I go, I think that's good enough. <laughs> bro you're in i call up i, love I call up duncan i go That's duncan awesome. i told him i go duncan tell her he's half armenian sam in in all that time of like no 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 in. she's like he Damn. In. and the show the arabian nights originally started out because I, I i remember talking to ahmed 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 i'm like dude black comedy night there's you know a thousand black comedians and a big black population that'll come see it women night they'll come see it latina night they come, i go middle eastern night. who the fuck's coming to see middle eastern night well we listened to Mitzi on that, and she was right on that because what it was was there was a need for that no voice. voice yeah. and, and also, she originally just had it like, she was like, anybody who's brown that's not Mexican or black, you're on the show. Mm -hmm. So we had this like Indian dude that was like British Indian. She had a girl who was white, but she did like a belly dance move in the middle of her show. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Shakira. Yeah, exactly. Shakira. Yeah, yeah. That's where she got her start. No, but it was, it was this mishmash of a show. And then eventually me, Sounds Ahmed, fun. and Aaron, and Sam became the original Arabian Nights. And then from there, we were like, well, Iranians aren't Arabs. Iranian, ethnically speaking, it's like saying to like, uh, you know, a Puerto Rican, you're Mexican. It's like, yeah. no, I'm not, I'm Puerto yeah. Rican. So similarly with the Iranian thing, um, we were like, we need another name that's a little edgier. And that's when George Bush had come out and said, there's an axis of evil. It's North Korea, Iran, and Iraq. 
So we're like, what about the Axis of Evil comedy tour? And that's when me, Ahmed, and Aaron took ownership of it because Sam, again, was not necessarily Middle Eastern like that. So <laughs> we took ownership. Not at all. Oh, Sam born and raised in LA, but, man. Sam but, he was good enough. <laughs> but he got into the club for that. Yeah, I love it. We did that a couple of times. There was, there was another show because Mitzi, by the way, when, she, when she's into you, she's into you. So she would like come to the club and there was times when I'd be like, you know, down the list over here and then some the booker would whatever the guy running it would come over and be like you're next i be like what mitzi wants to go wants you to go and oh wow like, oh fuck i better deliver yeah you know and you thank god you go up and you do well great so we were doing a big show in the main room one time missy shows up and you know the lineup is in a specific order and that's when brett ernst was one of my friends as well that started out with me he's hilarious and i'm like you know Ben Brett had like tried to be a regular and wasn't hadn't been getting any love, and so he was supposed to go up, and whoever it is comes over and goes, "Maz, Mitzi wants you to go next," and I was like, "Oh my god, I was hoping she'd watch Brett and then me," and they're like, "Doesn't matter, Mitzi wants you next." I go, "Do me a favor, just tell her you couldn't find me," and we trick we oh, tricked it. Brett goes up, kills it, regular. Oh, oh I'm like, bro, you yes. putting people on, Maz, yeah, bro. Yeah. You know, it's you know, fucking amazing. It is shamed, like, well, now you know you have Adam. Yeah, he get who you know he runs it and passes yeah. people. Yeah, but they're still not that like Mitzi, you know, like Dude. don't get me wrong, I respect the shit out of Adam, and you want you want to do well in front of Adam. Yeah, but there's not like a Mitzi kind. Mitzi of. was like I I will wear it as a, a, wear it as a badge of honor that I got to experience her, and and I tell everybody, you know, people say like you know what are some of your career highlights? Definitely becoming a regular at that club. Love that, that club, yeah. I grew exponentially at that club. Yes. Because one of the things comedians don't know, like I, I find like young comedians sometimes or people are very new to the game, they'll be like, can I come open for you? And I'm like, dude, Love you come that. open for me in front of a thousand hot fans who have spent money and they're gonna laugh at anything yeah. and do your seven minutes. But you should find places to get up where it's like, late nobody knows who you are and there's three people 100 yep. that's the kind of shit we had to do early on and the thing was she would put you up like i remember being up i was a clean comedian i, I didn't cuss that much and i was doing some political material but she was still giving me the midnight spot on a tuesday and i remember talking to joey diaz about it. i was like why am i up here following joe diaz brian holtzman whatever it was what? It's impossible to do. And he's like, bro, she's got a plan for you, bro. She's either put you up early or late. You gotta just go into it. So I did. I learned to I learned to adapt to follow the Joe Rogans and to follow like one of the one of the one of the times I remember, and this is another lesson I learned with stand up, one of the times I remember kind of dying of death was following Joey Diaz. Cause you guys know Joey Diaz is so in the moment and so all over the place. I love one of the Power things house. he said. I remember watching him one night and he was just killing but he was all over the place and he comes off i go joey d i go you got i go do you ever put a set list together <laughs> he goes you know how it is bro you got your set list all set and ready to go you get up on that stage you got to start calling audibles <laughs> <laughs> that's hard uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, either football right yeah um but i remember one night and this is the lesson i learned he killed and i went on stage and i got into my act and nobody was paying attention because he had just thrown a bomb in the room mm -hmm. and people were still talking and stuff. And that's when I realized if somebody kills or dies in front of you, you got to go up and acknowledge that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So ever since after that, I learned, forget my act. Mm -hmm. Forget what I, you got to run a set for, for a late night show. Mm -mm. Move, get that out of the way. Yep, yep. You got to go up and acknowledge what just happened. And ever since then, I learned like, you know, following Dice one night because these that back then Dice would show up Eddie Griffin would show up. Paul Mooney would show up. They would do one, two hours, sometimes three. Mm. Bump everybody. One bump everybody. So you're sitting there. It's like, you know, you're supposed to be. I told my then girlfriend, now wife, like, hey, I'll be back. I'm, I've got a set at midnight. I'll be back by 1230. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. This guy's coming. That You're calling yeah. her like, Eddie Griffin's got a lot on his mind tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dude. And then so, so I just remember Dice was up there, and he's up there. And again, Granted, this is the middle of the Iraq war with America. I'm very anti-war. I want to get up there and be like, you know, I can't believe George Bush did this and this, yeah. but I got jokes. I got punchlines. 
Dice is up there. He's doing some bit, and he's like, you know, you ever get in there and da da da, da and you're with the girl, and now you're doing suck ass, suck ass. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, suck ass. Suck yeah. ass. And, then, and then he goes, and Dice to this day, he'll talk about it, and he says, he, and I've heard him talk about this on interviews because he says there's no meaning. He he just he just starts going hot soup, hot soup. Hot soup. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? But the ten people in the crowd are dying. Dying. dying yeah. They're dying. He's killing. Yeah. And I'm like, and they know Dice. He's a legend, right? And then he's like, oh, right, who's next? And he's like, you know, and, that, and at that point, he probably didn't even know who I was. He's like, oh, this guy, okay, Maz. By the way, he, I've become friends with him since, and he, and he would call me the foreign comic. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, foreign guy. Yeah, yeah. He's like, who's next? Uh, uh, Maz, hey, this guy, he's got, I don't know, he must be fine. He's over here, I don't know. Here, cool. <laughs> <laughs> the worst intro ever. Yeah, yeah. ever. <laughs> By the way, the worst intro ever was, I'm not kidding, one time he was doing in the middle of all that, suck ass, suck ass. The mic gave feedback. Okay, again, granted, 10 people in the room, dying of his show, Mike gives feedback, it goes vroom, 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 some weird thing. He looks at the mic, drops the mic, looks at the audience, walks off stage. And everyone's like, what the hell just happened? And I'm next. Oh, so I got to run up on stage and be like, okay, people, people think I'm like the mic guy or something. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but what I learned was following like, having died a death after Joey Diaz, I, was like, I can't go up on stage and just be like, Not after suck ass, yeah. be like, what's up with George Bush and the, yeah. I went up there, I was like, I just go, suck ass, suck ass. I start repeating what he said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, I don't know about you guys, I go, that's stuck in my head all night. I'm going to be fucking, yeah, I'm going to be yeah. peeing in the middle of the night. I'm going to be suck ass, what the <laughs> hell is yeah, that? Yeah. And I just went on and on about his show for like a minute or two so people knew I'm in the room mm -hmm. and then I like transition into my thing. Those are the kinds of things you learn at that place to follow people in that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. I followed Martin Lawrence one time. He showed up. That's my he man. he packed the place. This is when the place was dead. And this is when it's Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence shows up at a morning station here in LA. This is when I'm used to come showing up on a Tuesday or a Wednesday to 10 people. I pull up. There's a line outside the comedy store door, like a line. The club is full. And I go, what the hell is going on? They go, Martin Lawrence announced he's doing a set tonight. <laughs> packed. He does 30 minutes, and to his credit, back in the day, he used to do the longer sets. But at this point, he was like, I'm sticking to my 30. He does his 30, and he's like, all right, who's next? And they're like, Maz. He's like, all right. I, I, again, he didn't know me. I think this guy's funny. He's here. Did Give you it. know you were going to follow Martin? I knew I was following yeah, uh, But yeah. I'm sitting there back watching, and when he goes, I got, when he says, I got to go, everyone in the crowd's like, no, come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, come on. No, no, no. But you don't even know, man. I, because I'd learned my lesson. Yeah. First thing I do when I go up there, everyone, you know, give it up for Maz. And then everyone's like, oh, you go, boy. Fuck. Yeah. I go up and I go, I go, hey, man. I go, I'm just as upset as you guys are. Yeah. I go, you think I wanted to follow Martin Lawrence? Yeah, I go, yeah. I'm in the back going, keep going. I don't need to do my spot. So I made fun of my own situation. Yeah. I go, you follow Martin Lawrence, motherfucker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, you think this is easy? Mm -hmm. And now they're buying into yeah, my, yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. He knows what's going on. Yeah, he like you're, you're aware of yeah. what the fuck just happened. You're I in know the room. what yeah. the fuck just happened. Exactly. Another time, I got so many of these stories. Another time, this was one of the craziest times. All right, so Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy was showing up at uh, Trippin' on Tuesdays to watch all, like, like Earthquake was killing and yeah. all these guys. Eddie Murphy show up in the main room with Charlie Murphy and a team, and they would just sit there in the main booth, watch, watch the main room packed on a Tuesday. It's packed, the main room. Original room, still empty, right? You know, 20, 30 people. Pauly Shore, who knows Eddie from back in the day, uh, goes, goes up to Eddie in the main room and convinces Eddie to come watch Pauly's set. He's like, hey, Eddie, I'm going to be doing my set in the original room, can you come watch? So I see Eddie Murphy, I'm watching all this, right? And I'm following Paulie, I'm next. But I'm. But this is my comedy hero, is walking past me, and he goes and he sits there, and he's watching Paulie, and he's sitting in the Mitzi Shore seat, which is right by the exit, mm -hmm. watching Paulie. I'm like, holy shit, I'm like, oh my God. And how's Paulie doing? Paulie's doing fine, but I'm sitting there going like, oh my God, if Paulie finishes and Eddie stays, he might see me, this is pretty, oh my God, this is, I'm like, oh world, please just align, this is amazing. So as, Paulie's finishing up, I see Eddie get up and just sneak out. Because Eddie's smart. He knows what's coming. Because two minutes later, Paulie Shore goes, ladies and gentlemen, we've got one of the biggest oh, comedians oh, in the no. history of comedy. He has not done comedy in 30 years. He's coming up tonight to do it for you. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Murphy. Original. <gasps> People oh. camp. People are running down the hallway. Get oh. it, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, yeah. People. Are, oh my God. And then Eddie's not there, right? Oh. And then Paulie's like, Eddie, come on up. 
Eddie? And then you got, I think it was Josh who comes over. He's like, uh, Eddie went back to the main room. He goes, well, go get him. We're all waiting. Polly's killing time. Polly's like, Eddie Murphy is coming back tonight. He used to come here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm in the back going like, I just hope Eddie just shows up so I can watch. <laughs> Eddie, I, just do yeah, something, man. I don't even want to fucking go up anymore. Bro, Josh walks back in. He goes, I, I told him. Uh, he goes, what'd you tell him? He goes, I told him Polly Short said, come to the original room. And he goes, what did he say? He, goes, he said, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, and then Polly goes, all right, well then, uh, all right, who's next then? And they go, Maz. He's like, he's like, well, he's kind of like the Persian Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you had some tough follow Right? Yeah. Bro, I went up on stage and I just, I took the mic. I go, listen, man, I'm more disappointed than every one of you. I go, <laughs> I go, I feel like we were at the club tonight and yeah. we were talking to the hottest girl all night. Yeah. And then the lights came up and she was gone. <laughs> And the and the most unattractive girl is left, and I'm that girl. Yeah. yeah. I go. You guys just got the last of the night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and again, they were with me because they felt what I was talking about. That's you know. Hilarious. Those moments are beautiful, yeah. though. Yeah. You want those moments, bro. And I've had. Listen. By the way, the other thing I wanted to say was Eddie Murphy having wanted to be at that club. Now, because when, when when I you know they put your name, they spell you write your name on the on the on the black yeah. wall. So. Um, when I became a regular, for whatever reason, they were like, we're not putting up names right now because it costs too much. Like the, the, club, the club wasn't doing well. And once, I think it was Kirk Fox, somebody became a regular and they were like, I'll pay the painter to put up the names. Mm. So they put my name up and the beauty of it is my name now at the comedy store is in front by the main room and it's on, It's just a little bit above Eddie Murphy's. Oh, man. Cool. What a story. And I'm like, holy shit. There you I go. wanted to be here and here I am. But that's I'll tell you one last story about Eddie Murphy. One night, same around the same time he's coming in the back and watching blah 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 i had just gotten back from a tour in australia where i was doing an hour hour plus i'm headlining right mm. and i don't know if you guys have ever felt it but when you come off the road where you're doing hour 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 and then you got to go do 15 it's tough you don't know like you don't it's like start and stop and you're like oh my god what do i even have 15 it's yeah. all over the place so it was one of those things where we're on autopilot you land at home and you call the club on a monday you're like i'm available every night even though I should have just been like, give me a week off. But I was like, I'm available. I'm ready to go. So they call me up. They're like, Tuesday night, you're on. All right. So I go up there and I'm like, start, stop, start, stop. Having a mediocre set. And I'm bringing up Steve Byrne after me. And Steve always does it. Like, he always mess around with me when he bring me up. Like, you know, Jeff Scott, who now has passed away, the piano yeah. guy. Uh, when you ask, you would ask him who's next. And Jeff would always be like, Maz Jobrani. And then Steve would always be like, who? He'd be like, Maz Jobrani. He's like, ah, I never heard of this guy. Uh, <laughs> sounds ethnic. Not sure if I trust him. Like, he messes with me. Yeah. So I would mess back with Steve, right? I'd be like, Steve, what? And, you know, so I have what I consider a mediocre set. But I'm as I'm having the set, in the back of my mind, a voice comes in and goes, dude, wake up and deliver. But then the other voice comes in and goes, no, man. The whole point of this original room is that you can do whatever you want. I go, who who could be in the audience that would make a difference? It doesn't matter. Like, because the club had always been like work out, work out. Yeah. Don't worry about the industry. So I was like, I'm, I can't be disappointed. Like, this is fine. Like, just hang in there and keep this. Thing. Keep yeah. trying your mediocre jokes and see if any of them sticks. I like show danger. Yeah, who could be here tonight? Mm -hmm. Well, after I introduce Steve with another like weird introduction, I come off stage and there's a guy named Johnny Zap who was like the. Uh, bar fly of the comedy store he used to hang out and he would tell you things like oh yeah man i used to help richard Pryor write his jokes and you're like really really but he's sitting in the audience and as i'm walking past him because the room is really dark he grabs my arm he's like hey man eddie's here and i was like oh that's great because i thought eddie's in the main room and and he goes yeah eddie and and then i was like okay and as i'm walking out of the original room unbeknownst to me eddie murphy has come into the original room and sat in mitzi's chair and seen my mediocre set. Oh no. And I walk past Eddie Murphy. I'm like, oh shit. And then I go downstairs and I'm in the hallway there. And I'm like, I hope he didn't see the whole thing. And I see him get up from the chair, go down the stairs, come into the hallway. I'm trying to make eye contact. He avoids eye contact. Oh, I'm like, no. oh God. And it was so bad. And then in the back of my mind, I thought, because this is the thing. I always say I got into comedy because you're, you're inspired in life by greatness and mediocrity. Mm -hmm. And I got into comedy because I saw a couple guys who were mediocre. And I was like, if they can do it, I, I can, can do it. it. Yep. So in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, all right, I hope Eddie Murphy saw me tonight. And I was so bad 
that he'll end up on a talk show and when they ask him what made you come back he'll be like there was this one Persian comedy <laughs> he was so bad I thought you know I can come back <laughs> wow hell yeah so, damn, damn. that was so inspiring that was, yeah, yeah Dude, that's thank cool. you for damn, that damn I want to build something that's, yeah. yeah I know right man <laughs> yeah. I want to go home I want to achieve yeah, yeah, but it's all about the journey that's basically yeah. what you're saying all no, about the yeah. journey yeah. Yeah. Well, all you boys are on the road Friday and Saturday so yeah, yeah. where are you guys headed uh, San, Marcos, San Marcos, Texas. Okay, okay. Yeah. Texas is really the only place, you know, Texas, Arizona, Arizona. Nashville, Florida. Florida. Especially I did, Florida. I did Arizona just to see, just to be able to say that I've done stand-up indoors under the pandemic. And I'll be honest with you guys, I felt a little uncomfortable simply because I saw in the room half the crowd masked, half the crowd not masked. I could yeah. tell some people were nervous, some people weren't. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to lay low till we get to a point where everyone can just not – have that thought in their minds and for indoor shows you know yeah i yeah I, and i get that I, I think for certain comics especially their crowd i don't know what your crowd is um mine's like 18 to 36 males right in shape they yeah. don't when i say this yeah they don't give a fuck yeah even i'm like hey, can you guys catch kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. maybe a mask when yeah. you go to the bat like they yeah. don't give a fuck yeah man. yeah well it's I been hope- great but I'm, listen, we love stand up. Like that's why, like when I, even doing the set I did at the uh, outdoor show, that's what I live for. You know, you yeah. you, you feel alive after. Like, I want to do that again. And I think you realize that in the pandemic, to your point, it's like it's something you can't live without or something you can't do without. I, you know, it's to me. I'll talk to a comic, and they're like, "Yeah, dude, I'm I'm just not worried about it. I'll shut it down 2022." I'm like, "Oh, I can't do that. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'll yeah. do it wherever." Well, I've been doing a lot of like Zoom shows, which at first I was hesitant to do, but then I realized they actually work because you just get like ten of the people, you unmute them, so you can hear the laughter. Mm-hmm. And you could do crowd work because you're seeing people, and it's not just yeah. their clothes. Now it's their homes. Yeah, make fun of them like that. Yeah. So I've done those. I've done some uh, outdoor social distancing shows that have been great because people mm-hmm. are desperate to get out. Yes. Yeah. So that's the other thing. Big time. So all that stuff I've been doing, and uh, and we keep going, man. Doing my podcast, doing you know, you do you doing this kind of stuff. You're on the All Things uh, Comedy Network. All Things Comedy is called Back to School with Maz Jobrani. I just bring people. Uh, the idea was my kids would ask me questions I didn't know the answers for. They'll ask some shit, man. some crazy shit. Like, you got to be like Neil deGrasse Tyson to yeah, know the answers. Do, yeah, yeah. I, sometimes I'll Google it, but sometimes I'm like, who cares, That's, dude? Well, exactly. So, so, so instead of Googling, I said, I'll, I'll kids bring will it. ask shit like. You know, stuff that you should know as a dad. Why does it rain? I don't fucking know because the sky opens you know, My up son asked me last night, yeah. Dad, how long does it take to get to Mars? Because there's a, uh, that Matt Damon movie was on TV. Yeah. And he's like, oh, where, where's he at? I'm like, he's on Mars. And he's like, can we live there? I'm like, they're trying to figure it out. Like Elon yeah. Musk might get <laughs> yeah. there. And he goes, how long would it take us to get to Mars? Like, you've never... Yeah. What? Yeah. And I was like, I don't. I mean, well, that's like exactly five hundred days. That's I, exactly it. You, you, you give vague answers. Oh, but it, you don't want vague answers. Yeah. Because yeah. you want him going to school. Yeah. And then them. My dad's him, an idiot. Him, well, but him <laughs> pushing. Yeah, my dad's a dumbass. <laughs> or my dad says we can get there in three months. Yeah. And the teacher's like, yeah. your dad's full of shit. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. So I have to Google him. Like, it, you know, it takes like five hundred some days, dude. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why, like, for the show, uh, I bring on like experts and and we learn from them. So I actually had a guy who helped land the rover on Mars. Oh, I love it. Yeah, That's so he dope. came and talked. And, and I had um, I had also, um, I had on, uh, um, Tehran's my co-host. Mm-hmm. I had um, uh, uh, Michael. Oh, I love him. Yeah, Tehran's great. I had Michael Cohen, who was Trump's fixer. Yes. He was on. Oh, really? Yeah, I had a lady who was a cave diver. She dives underneath glaciers to look for organisms. So it's crazy. And, and it's become an excuse to just talk. So it's a fun show. It's to dope. Do. Yeah, and it always starts with a question from my kids. That's my son right there in his pajamas. Oh, I love it. Yeah. The, oh, yeah, the uh, dragon. Yeah, so they'll ask they'll ask a question at the top, and uh, and uh, and then we go from there. So it's been, yeah, the woo, it's been fun to do. If you need some questions, let me know. My son will s- ask some insane Bro, shit. Bro, we should have man. you on to talk about fighting. That will be good. Whatever you want, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll have you on. on and do it. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Because it's just talking. It's just it's an excuse to talk. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? And then you also find out how many interesting things people are doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get you to know? learn something. Um, so, yeah, it's been, that's been do- I've been doing that. And then the special. I got that special coming out. The so- special comes that drops tomorrow? Is that right? It drops tomorrow. It's on uh, on uh, Peacock, which yeah. is the new uh, yeah. NBC Dreaming. streamer. Mm-hmm. And it's called Pandemic Warrior. The story with the special was December 2019. I went to Dubai. I filmed the special and it was called Peaceful Warrior. And I was like, all right, I'll go back home, I'll sell this, and I will, uh, you know, uh, um, I got all my tour dates, my career is gonna take off in 2020, this is my year. And then as we were talking, everything just stopped. And so what happened was, 
great was, cover. Yeah, I was, I was about to say. Yeah, I was watching a lot of specials that mm -hmm. came out mm -hmm. when the pandemic hit, and they'd been shot before the pandemic. And you can tell. And you could tell it's weird because I was like, it looks like they shot this on Mars because like there's an audience together, no yeah. one's masked, and the comedian's talking about traffic. Like, what's yeah, going on? Yeah, even the references that you're just like, oh, what exactly. Yeah. So I decide what I'm going to do is if I'm going to do this right, I go, what I'll do is I'll do like five minutes at the top from inside my closet where I've been doing comedy. And then I'll be like, now let's go watch the special I shot. And then at the end, I'll do another few minutes from the closet. So, so I it's take, relevant. So yeah. So, yeah. To it. so yeah. Peaceful Warrior became Pandemic Warrior. Love it. And again, how is, how is it doing 20. stand up in uh, Dubai? It's fantastic, dude. Is it good? Dude, people love Dubai, man. Dude, just not just Dubai, but the whole Middle East, there's a lot of. We, when we went in 2007 with the Access of Evil Comedy Tour, it was the first time there was a group of American comics who came to the Middle East to perform for the people of the Middle East. Mm. But ever since 2007 to now, it has just like taken off, and comedy is a big thing there. And if you if you think about it, like you got YouTube, you got Netflix, they know us. Yeah, it's worldwide. You know, yeah. so when you go to do shows in Dubai or in Beirut or in Jordan or wherever you're going, fans show up, they love it, and because they're not as spoiled as we are in the West, where you could watch pre-pandemic you'd watch stand-up seven nights a week yeah they come out they come out and they it's fantastic it. yeah, yeah yeah i highly I recommend that, i tell people yeah, when this pandemic that. ends travel like i've done i've done the middle east i did australia i've done europe i did indonesia did you do ireland um i did it i did ireland i did dublin on me too yeah. unreal yeah it's unreal dude. it's amazing same dude. thing they're so grateful that you came out there in australia too yeah that american comic will come out there the yeah. crowds are nuts yeah yeah, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. I experienced that. Yeah. Nuts. So that's it. Folks. Yeah, I'll check out your yeah. special, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, Pandemic I, I, warrior. Pandemic warrior. I hope it makes sense still. Like you said, it's like some of the stuff we were talking about before. Yeah, it's weird to watch comics that have released them during the pandemic, and it's just yeah, it just I, I I think the the best special I saw that hit the hardest. And it's because he did it. He shot it during the pandemic. Was Kevin Hart's mm -hmm. did absolutely it from his house? Yeah, and you're like, oh, I can relate to that. Especially yeah. if you have kids, you're like, dude, he's crushing it. Absolutely, and that's what. In all honesty, like I wanted to do a pandemic only special where it was an hour of just pandemic material, but the logistics of putting it together were too hard, and I had this hour already shot. So that's why I kind of compromised and said I'll do the few minutes at the top. Then I'm hoping some of the jokes that are on there still are relevant. Still work. But, I, but at least I'm trying to put you in the frame of mind of saying, I know what I know you what's are going thinking on. Yes. right now. Yep. You know, because even when you watch like a movie or a TV show that was shot pre pandemic, someone's shaking hands and hugging. I'm like, mm -hmm. what the hell is yeah. going on there? Yeah. It's a different feeling. Yeah. Well, yeah. we love you, man. Thanks yeah. for finally Dude, coming on, thank brother. You, Thanks for yeah. having me, you guys. Go check out his special. All the, gyms. All the best. Yeah, yeah, that was so fun, man. Yeah, man. Don't let Good your wife shit. see us touching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, <ew. laughs> I wash my hands. <laughs> I wash my hands. <laughs> Don't wrong. Didn't Good touch girl. my face. I didn't touch my face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you, Miles. Thanks, oh, yeah. guys. Thanks, Thank Miles. You. What's up, y'all? They call me Chappelle. I can't get in the clubs no more because my shoes is too tight. Lacy. Uh, got the, <laughs> that's, that's what they call you? <laughs> and these blue Cortez is from my dad. Shout out to him. He did 17 years in a joint. Hard time. Okay? Hard time. Get you some hard Cortezes. You know what I'm saying? I can't get in the clubs no more. <laughs> Wave check? Wave check. Wave check? You know what it is. All right. They, they hating it because they see it it's starting. Oh, right? yeah. Look at the back right there. I brush it. Yeah. Filling in nicely. Filling in nicely. Look at this. Come on, I mean, what would that say? Read that, Chief. Play your shit only. Yeah, no, he didn't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. No, I'm saying. Play your shit only. with the pink laces, you know what I mean? Like the socks. The socks type too. Yeah, so who was that on the socks? It's kind of wrinkled, so I can't see. We pulled up a little. Oh, my gosh. Who was that? There. Oh, shit. That's my like B, bro. That's, roll, that's little Roly. Yeah, little Roly boy. Oh, Roly on yeah. the socks? <laughs> Roly on the bottom. Did he get the Roly? Yeah. Nah, you can get oh, it. there it is. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, the 43. Shout out to the real 43 for these socks, man. Yeah. 43. Oh, yeah. 43. Those dope-ass socks. Yeah. He's got a pair that have me on. Picture of you on your socks. Yeah, picture. Yeah, here. Uh, Faye, you got all of us on our, on our. You just said this. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, where's where, where ours? Oh, wait, yeah. everybody's shoes made in China. These are Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> what? What the fuck? Listen, man. Everything we wear is made in China. These are the Chinese Jordan thighs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, custom made. All right, God damn. I, I use an exacto knife to custom make them myself. You mm -hmm. see the prints? Mm. Those are those Wuhan J's. <laughs> Wuhan J's. <laughs> they living it up. Them bro. bat soup specials. <laughs> living it up, you want Those yeah. Yang, Yao Ming hitters. 
Burning up, we say mm -hmm. what? You do. And all my people that be living it up, we say what? Do I do? Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>